sa public hearing on SB 1138 or the Local Government Agriculture Act. Okay. Uh, today's agenda is Senate Bill 1138 introduced by yours truly entitled An Act Strengthening Local Government Participation in Agriculture Development by Institutionalizing a 10% Budgetary Allocation for the Implementation of Programs, Activities, and Services for Agriculture and Fisheries and Amending for the Purpose Section 17 106, 107, 110, 287, 443, 454, 482-A, and 511-A of Republic Act 7160, otherwise known as the Local Government Code, and for other purposes. I wish to acknowledge the presence of Senator Amy Marcos. She's here. Yes, Madam Chair, she's here online. Okay, okay. And uh, okay. I want uh, I want to acknowledge my uh, committee secretary to acknowledge a resource person present at today's hearing. Good morning, Madam Chair. We have a long list of uh, attendees, Madam Chair. Yeah, that's but okay. Point, but at this point, uh, these are the names who are in actual attendance. Okay. From the Department of Agriculture, we have Yusek Ariel Tikayanan, the Undersecretary for Operations. Mm -hmm. We have Yusek Rodolfo Vicera, the Undersecretary for Policy and Planning. Mm -hmm. We have Yusek Cheryl Marina Tividad. Uh, for agri-industrialization and fisheries. We mm -hmm. have uh, Yusek William Medrano from the Undersecretary for Livestock. We have Director Eduardo Gongona from the BIFAR. Uh, from the regions, Madam Chair of the Department of Agriculture, Mr. Antonio Herondio, Mimaropa. Mm -hmm. We have Marisa Luna, the Chief Research Division of the same region. From Region 5, uh, no, from Region 6, uh, Western Visayas, Dr. Peter Sobrivega, Regional Technical Director for Research, Dr. Corazon Arroyo, uh, the Chief Research Division, and Mr. Fabio Enriquez. From Region 13, uh, Mr. Abel Wagas, the Chief of Research Division. From the BIFA Regional Directors, uh, Luis June Fermin, the Chief Aquaculturist for CAR. Then also from Carl Mary P. Tauli and Mr. Joseph Albert Uluan. From the Department of Agrarian Reform, Attorney Annabel Ondasan, a member of the Department of Agrarian Reform Adjudication Board. Attorney Bridget Amsorita, a DAR consultant. Then from Maybe uh, from DAR, we should uh, invite those on developmental. Huh? Hindi naman to adjudication. <laughs> Oh, hindi ito legal eh. This is about development of agriculture. So sasabihin mo kay Dar Secretary na pag ganito ang hearing, dapat hindi yung legal, yung developmental part of the Department of Agrarian Reform kasi we are uh, talking of the development of agriculture. Okay? Thank so, you. Actually, they sent uh, the names of ASIC Paolo Guason and ASIC Milagros Isabel Asik Guason is with the Assistant Secretary for Policy Planning and Research Office. Then uh, Asik Cristobal is for so Support Services Office. We're just awaiting their attendance, Madam okay. Chair. Maybe you should be, uh, give emphasis to the local government officials who are here because this is about them. Okay. Yes, After will... acknowledging DA, you should acknowledge the. So I will know who are the local government officials who are here. Kasi malaki implication nito sa kanila. Gusto ko madinig ang kanilang sasabihin. Okay? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, I first call on the Department of Interior and Local Government Representative, uh, Yusek Rico Judge Javier Echevere, uh, the Undersecretary for External and Logistical Affairs. I proceed to the local government uh, leagues, Madam Chair. Uh, mm -hmm. Although there are uh, re still representatives from the other national offices, I will mention their okay. names later. 
uh, from the local government leagues, from the League of Provinces, uh, we invited the President, uh, uh, Honorable Velasco, but at this point, we only have uh, the Vice President for Luzon, uh, Ms. Joanna, okay. Madam yes. Chair. That's okay. 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 Uh, from from uh, the Vice President for Luzon, League of Provinces, represented by Ms. Johanna Dizon. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we have Honorable Wilter Y. Palma, the Vice President for Mindanao. Mm -hmm. uh, she, he is with us, actually, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we have the Governor himself of Batangas, mm -hmm. uh, the Honorable Hermilando Mandanas. Because she's the author of the of the law uh, of the, of the <laughs> Supreme Peace Court Party. ruling. Yes, yes. yes. So yes. thank you, thank you for the invitation, Madam Chair. Oh, yes. Okay, we have the representative of the Governor of Quezon Province, uh, the, the Honorable Suarez, Mr. Roberto Di mm -hmm. Then from the Province of Laguna, uh, representing uh, the, the Governor himself, Madam Chair, is with us, Ramel Ramil El Hernandez. Yeah, I, I I see him. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, we have uh, the Secretary General of the League of Cities of the Philippines, Honorable Arnan Panaligan. Okay. From Indoro? Okay. Yes, Madam Chair, from yes. Calapan okay. City. Okay. Then, uh, then we have the representative of the city of San Jose, Mayor Mario Salvador, uh, in the person of Mr. Mercenario Maliari. Okay. Then we I, have... I see the Vice Governor of uh, Aklan. Uh -huh. Ah, yes, Madam Chair. Okay, uh, from the Mayor of Palayan City uh, is with us, Honorable Adrian May Cuevas, with mm -hmm. Attorney Jimuel B. De La Cruz. Mm -hmm. Then the Lucina City uh, Mayor is represented by Ms. Melissa Letargo, the City Agriculturist. Mm -hmm. Then from the Liga ng Barangay, we have uh, represent the representative, uh, Luvki Avila Fanlo. She was with us uh, before, Madam Chair. Then uh, we have the League of Vice Mayors, Director Christopher Absede. Mm -hmm. Then uh, from the Office of the Honorable Governor of Camarines Sur, the Representatives, Engineer Joel Talay, the Provincial mm -hmm. Planning and Development Office Officer, mm -hmm. Ms. Mm -hmm. Robelia Naldo, uh, and Mr. Romeo Uida. Madam Chair, uh, let me go back uh, to the representatives of the national offices. From, from uh, the NEDA, National Economic Development Authority, uh, represented by Ms. Hazel Alfora, mm -hmm. Alforja. Mm -hmm. Then from the DBM, Department of Budget and Management, Director Aris Makaspak, mm -hmm. Director Christina Clasara, Director Emilita Menghamal. Mm -hmm. From the Department of Science and Technology, Ms. Christine Predo. From uh, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, uh, the Research Fellow, Ms. Charlotte Justine D. Sikat. From the National uh, Philippine Statistics Authority, we have Ms. Precious Jacinto, Senior Statistical Specialist, and Ms. Nisita de Guzman, also the Senior Statistical Specialist in Fisheries. From the B. Bureau of Internal Revenue, Attorney Ron Michael Uy, uh, the Law and Legislative Division Office. From the Bureau of Customs, with Ms. Donna Iris Sevilla, the Assistant Chief for Revenue Collection Monitoring Group. Also from the same group, Attorney Karin Anyambao. From Agricultural Training Institute, uh, Mr. Bernard James Tandang, the Project Development Officer. Then from the National Irrigation Administration, the Administrator himself, uh, General Ricardo R. Visaya, is with us. Dr. Terzo Aeronquillo from the Philippine Association of State Universities and Colleges, PASOC, is also with us, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Then uh, also with him uh, is Attorney Los Viminda Rosales, the PASOC Legal Consultant. Then... Uh, uh, Madam Chair, we requested uh, the DBM and the uh, DILG to make a presentation. So far, uh, uh, the DILG, 
EBM and DILG, we requested for the presentation, uh, slide presentation. The DILG so far has responded to us, Madam Chair. They're going to make a presentation. Uh, that's you. all for now, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Uh, I guess we will have a very long discussion about this. I didn't know that this is a very complicated topic now because of the implementation of the Mandanas ruling and at the same time because of EO138 which, uh, which provided for the devolution of many uh, national government expenses to the local government uh, because uh, the national government budget will be capped because it will be given to the local government in form of era in form of era okay so agriculture plays a significant role in the eco country's economy although the share of agriculture and natural resources in the total gross domestic products has been declining since 2000 the sector continues to play an important role in the country's economy. The sector is important for inclusive growth, with agriculture being the key driver of the economy in the rural areas where most Filipinos live, but is also where poverty incidents remain high. Agriculture also remains to be a major source of employment, with report from the World Bank that 23% of the total employed population, which is around 44 million, is working in the agricultural sector. It is with this foregoing that guided me in drafting Senate Bill 1138 in view of the finality of the Mandana's ruling. The critical matter that we must answer is the public fiscal policy repercussion to the national government on the implementation of the Mandana's ruling, which is set, set to take effect next year. The Mandana's ruling will greatly affect the national budget for the next fiscal year. Report says that the Department of Finance initially computed an increase of 27.6 to the budget that has to be given a share of LGUs. This is equivalent to 134.39 billion increase to the internal revenue allotment of LGUs. As a result of the Supreme Court decision, instead of 848 billion, that the LGU share will become 1.083 trillion. And this will surely heavily affect the budget of the Department of Agriculture. The question that is begging to be answered is how can the national government ensure what? that no corresponding diminution in the delivery of public services given the reduced okay. spending? Okay. As to mitigate, who is talking? As to mitigate and address the fiscal constraints brought about by the Mandana's ruling, Executive Order Number 138, Series of 2021, was signed, which directs the full devolution of basic services and facilities from the national government to the local government units, effective next year. That will affect the agricultural sector that will be devolved to the LGU. Under Section 17 of the Local Government Code, agricultural support services are considered basic services to be devolved to the local government units. What are the examples of these uh, uh, devolved functions? Uh, the planting material distribution system, the operation of farm produce collection and buying stations, the farm to market road, okay? Dispersal of livestock and poultry, fingerlings and other seeding materials for aquaculture, palai, corn and vegetable seed farms, medicinal plant gardens, fruit trees, coconut and other kinds of seedling nursery and demonstration farms, quality control copra and improvement and development of local distribution channels, preferably through cooperatives, 
inter-barangay irrigation system, water and soil resource utilization and conservation projects, and enforcement of fisheries laws in the municipal water, including the conservation of mangrove. Prevention and control of plant and animal pests and diseases, dairy farms, livestock market, animal breeding stations, and artificial insemination center, assistance in the organization of farmers and fishermen's cooperative and other collective organization, as well as the transfer of appropriate technology. Uh, it's good that we pass the Coconut Levy Industry Development Fund because that would come from the Coco Levy Fund. So that will continue as a national project and uh, that can help the local government in this devolution. Okay, it is good also that we pass the rice tarification law which provided the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund that legalized the spending of tariff for of rice tariff for the rice farmers. So that will not be affected. So right now uh, we have to discuss this of the 81 provinces, 146 cities, 1,488 municipalities, 42,000 barangays, how many exactly are ready to provide these services to the Filipino people? Despite many technological advances, Philippines remains to be a predominantly agricultural country with many people relying on agriculture to support their families. The COVID-19 pandemic also emphasized the role with which agriculture place in our economy. While COVID-19 pandemic is primarily a public health concern, the measures adopted by the government to curb the spread of the virus unfortunately cause a severe impact to all levels of the agricultural market chain. It is on these premises that I would like to hear the opinion of everyone in attendance to guide me in developing this bill further. When I drafted this bill, I wanted local government units to strengthen their support to the agricultural sector. But at this point, while we are still in reeling from the devastation and challenges brought by the pandemic, I would very much like to hear from all sectors concerned. In addition, with the increase in era of LGUs and the devolution that goes with it, as based on EO138, which was passed, which was uh, uh, formulated this year, uh, we have to discuss this thoroughly because this is a very confusing uh, era in our history. With that, uh, I would like now to hear from you. I just want to acknowledge the presence of Senator. Uh, uh, Tolentino, uh -oh, who is the chairman of the com Committee on Local Government. And this is, I think, it's about, this bill is about agriculture and the local government. So I'm glad he came. So uh, I just want to thank Senator Toll for coming today. Thank you very much. Okay, so we should now hear uh, from our resource person. We will hear... First, from the presentation to be done by DBM ba ang magpipresent? And uh, sino-sino magpipresent? Uh, uh, Atty. Lina, sino ang unang magpipresent? Atty. Lina. Yes, Madam Chair, the DILG. Oh, DILG. Uh, and then the DBM. Is the DBM presenting? Uh, Madam Chair, they said yes. Uh, we will wait for them after after okay. uh, the DILG. So we listen from the DILG presentation. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair.
Can we ask the slides to be presented? This is a position paper prepared by the legal department and the legislative liaison Depart uh, uh, office. Position paper on Senate Bill number 1138 entitled an act strengthening local development by instituting a 10% budgetary allocation from their internal revenue allotment for the implementation of programs, activities, and services for agriculture and fisheries and amending for the purpose Section 17, 106, 107, 110, 287, 443, 454, 482A, and 511A of Republic Act 7160, otherwise known as the Local Government Code and for other purposes. Next slide, please. We submit a view that instituting a budgetary allocation of 10% of the internal revenue allotment dedicated for programs, activities, and services for agriculture and fisheries is a strategic measure to boost farmers and fishermen's livelihood. The same will provide them with more buying power, which will likely contribute to economic stability within local communities, thereby indirectly benefiting the national economy. Next slide, please. However, this proposed mandate for local government units to automatically allocate the 10% ERA to these particular programs may be considered inconsistent with the principle of local autonomy guaranteed by the 1987 Constitution. Next slide, please. In view thereof, the department may, we re may respectfully manifest its support to the passage of the proposed measure with the recommendation that the proposition with regard to the 10% ERA allocation for agriculture be couched, be couched as a mandate for local governments to merely prioritize the same in the absence of a more pressing and emergency need of the people that should be addressed by the local government. We also understand the fact, Madam Chair, that uh, the Philippines really needs to compete well with other Southeast Asian nations in terms of agricultural produce. And with that, uh, we will leave to the committee and to the collective wisdom of uh, the senators as to the direction that we will follow. Again, Mr. Ch Madam Chair, thank you very much. Um, there is a report here, uh, list of devolved PAPs in budgets of the national government agencies that may might be devolved to LGUs in 2022. Who made this report? Uh, Attorney Lina, I guess. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, that hasn't reached our attention, Madam Chair. Um, uh, this is a very good report so that the local government will have an idea of what will be devolved to them. <laughs> with the increase in ERA. Uh, uh, I think it is a study of the PIDS. Uh, who sent this to me? Turn maybe, your key, turn your red key. maybe we can... Uh, I guess, Madam Chair, that uh, came from Dr. Manasan, Dr. Rosario Manasan. Also, maybe you can show our local government this one. So they will have an idea. This is not, uh, this is just a study. But might as well, the local government will see the study because here they have a, a, a description of what will be devolved and the appropriation for this in the 2020 GAA and, uh, and uh, it will be devolved to provinces, barangay, municipalities and so forth. And there is an amount here which is uh, almost the same amount as the amount that will be given to them under the Mandana's ruling. So you will have an idea of uh, what what is in store for you. So as ako, uh, I'm not saying that I will defend this bill in the, in the Senate. It's just an idea from me that uh, local government should give more attention to agriculture because it is very important 
because we now realize that our agriculture is a so source of our food. It is very necessary for our food security. So if we don't invest in it, then uh, we will have problem with our food security. So I thought that uh, local government should give importance to that, especially now in this period of pandemic, re we realize that uh, of all the things that is important to us, I think it is food, di ba? Kasi uh, kung hindi man tayo mamatay sa COVID-19, mamamatay naman tayo sa kagutuman. <laughs> oh. So, uh, kaya naging idea ko to, but I'm not, I'm not, uh, I want to hear what you have to say about this. Kasi I don't know what you really do for your farmers and fisher folks in the local level. Except that uh, it says uh, you will be given 200 additional 234 billion in 2022, and that is uh, if you divide it by the number of local government, it's around 150 million per municipality. So, uh, what will you do with your 150 million? Will you give a portion of it to agriculture for our food security? And uh, there will be things that will be devolved to you because of this Mandana's ruling. And so you have to make a budget for those that will be devolved to you. So I just want to hear what you think about it. So can we, uh, no, we, we show them this uh, no, very enlightening kasi tong, ano, na to, eh, yung, yung nilagay na to ng PITS. Can we show yes, them? Yes. Yes, Madam Chair, we can call on uh, Ms. Charlotte Justin Sikat, one of the PIDS representatives, to elaborate on that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, uh, Senator Stolentino and Senator Marcos. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. The, the study that uh, Madam Chair is referring to is the one of Dr. Manasan. And mm -hmm. um, uh, it does, in fact, uh, suggest, because at the time... I. I'm speaking for myself. Uh, this is my interpretation of her study, please. Uh, um, so patience with me. Um, so because the, uh, we are not here to force them to apply yes. this, but they should have an idea of what they are. They have to do in the future. So I guess when you read this study, you will know what you have to do in the future. That's Just an idea. They don't have to follow this, but it's good that we give them the study. Diba? Apo, yes, ma'am. Actually, we can also share that with the secretariat, so it could also be shared with the rest of those attendees. Yeah. But the, the study, it, it identifies certain programs, uh, activities, as Madam Chair mentioned, that could possibly be devolved. Um, the EO number 138 uh, is creating this uh, devolution transition plan, is requesting uh, national government agencies as well as um, the, the local governments and I think uh, Under Secretary Echeverry would know more about this because they're spearheading the, the this. But in the paper, um, it's actually not in my comments um, because it's, um, it's uh, um, slightly different, but it's very important for local governments. So, so the, the paper of Dr. Manasan identifies certain programs, activities, and projects that could possibly be devolved. And these would be more of the functions that have local benefits to the uh, constituents. If the, for example, if the, uh, this would be uh, local roads, uh, social welfare, street lights, these are examples of, of, of um, programs that directly benefit the constituents within a certain local government. Okay, there are other programs in that particular study, if I recall correctly, uh, I haven't read it in some time, uh, if I recall correctly, if there are certain programs that might have to involve uh, coordination across LGUs because they cross borders. Um, Madam Chair mentioned earlier interlocal uh, interbarangay irrigation. So there are certain um, um, certain projects such as these that might have to involve a higher level of government coordination or across LGU coordination. So that's also important. But then for the other, I think um, for the others, that would be the national government. Like I think redistribution, um, certain large social protection programs such as the 4 piece would still remain with the national government. But um, if we also refer to the, the Section 17 of the Local Government Code, so some of the programs and activities that was mentioned in that study actually refer to the, the already devolved functions uh, 30 years ago. 
And these would include the economic services such as agricultural extension, community-based uh, forestry, tourism facilities, local public works, um, telecommunications, water services, the school building program, let's say field health and hospital services, which is very important right now, as well as social welfare services. So I believe that some of the, the programs that were identified by Dr. Manasan there um, tries to um, estimate, it does in fact estimate an equivalent of about 250 billion that will be now uh, um, assigned or completely devolved now to local governments. And uh, it's so uh, coincidental that the the amount will be that will be given to them is around this figure also, right? Yes, yes, two hundred thirty-five billion. So, parang may budget na dito alsin to sa national government and it will be devolved to the local government. Yes. So I guess uh, what I can ask from you is to send the local government this study if you are allowed to do that and this. Uh, because they have here a list of the devolved uh, that the national government agencies that uh, a list of projects that the national government agency may be redevolved re to LGUs in 2022. And it says here uh, agricultural machinery, equipment facilities and infrastructure program, uh, irrigation network services, farm to market road, human resource for health deployment, health facilities enhancement program, social health protection program, supplementary feeding program, services for residential and center-based clients, construction, repair, rehabilitation of various infrastructure, uh, project provision for potable water supply, solid waste management, Barangay officials that benefit, assistance to municipalities, assistance to cities, conditional matching grant to provinces for road repair, rehabilitation and improvement, and other financial assistance to LGUs. So these are the things which they think will be devolved redevolved to the local government. So, and there is also a study by PIDS on devolution of the Mandanas Garcia SC ruling of LGU's increase share in all taxes collected. Uh, and, uh, and I think they will establish here uh, a committee on devolution <laughs> oh. will yes, also be created to oversee and monitor the implementation of administrative and fiscal decentralization goals of the uh, EO138, resolve issues and concerns that may arise in the implementation of the EO, ensure the elimination of any regulatory or fiscal control on automatic releases of LGU shares, and adopt mechanism to ensure the continuous delivery of public services by the national government agency and the LGUs, among others. Okay, it says here that the LG secretary is, will serve as co-chairperson of the Committee on Devolution together with the secretary of the Department of Budget and Management. Among the committee members are the social economic planning secretary, the secretary of finance, the executive secretary, the president of the leagues of provinces, the league of cities, the league of municipalities, the league of barangays, and the union of local authorities of the Philippines. So uh, I think uh, you will have a committee here to make sure because I think uh, 2022 is something that is uh, uh, something that we have to prepare for because it is where the era will increase, but the devolution will be started. Okay. Madam, Madam yes, Chair. Uh, Madam, Chair. Uh, Madam Chair. May I hear from the DILGU sec, uh, Malabanan? Okay. <laughs> RJ, it's very good. But iba nakalagay sa sa'yo. <laughs> Middle initial po yun, ma. <laughs> ah, okay. It's very. Okay. Yes. Nakalagay lang kasi easy. Eh, yes, alam ko yes. lang Echeverry ang apelyido mo. <laughs> yes. Hindi talaga yung Echeverry. <laughs> okay, sige. DILG USEC Echeverry. Yesterday, Madam, um, Madam Chair, we have um, a consultative meeting with all uh, local government uh, 
officers, namely the League of Provinces, Cities, Municipalities, and even Barangays, together with our partner national government agencies in explaining the devolution uh, process, Madam Chair, and the, and the signed executive order of the President. Uh, just to uh, just for the committee's uh, uh, knowledge, we are in constant communication with them, Madam Chair, and uh, are co are continuously consulting with them on how to improve further the devolution. Uh, just for the committee's information, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, are there other comments? I will just want to ask this from DBM. Nandiyan na ba yung DBM? Yes, ma'am. They are with okay. us already. They're going okay. to make a presentation as well, Madam Chair. Oh, so they make their presentation now before I ask the question. Okay. Debian, please uh, proceed with your presentation. Good morning, po, Madam Chair. This is James Evangelista po from the liaison office. So... This is in response po to the questions and issues uh, that were furnished to us by the committee po last night. So first po, the first question, the next slide please. Uh, to what extent will the national government be impacted by the Mandanas Garcia ruling? And what changes will this ruling bring forth to the current situation of the local government units? So as we all are aware po ma'am, so since the national tax allotment po for the LGUs this coming fiscal year 2022 would be about 960, 960 billion. So this was based on the BIR and BOC BTR computation. So this also based on the local budget memorandum dated June 14, 2021. So since meron po silang increase po ma'am, we are also encouraging them po that uh, agriculture be a part of their uh, development plans. No, uh, when you talk of 960, is it today or in 2022? Because I mean, iba figure, mas malaki sa 2022. Um, based on computation po, it is for 2022 po, ma'am. Sa amin, parang yan yung 2021, tapos may additional sa 2022. Opa. May I request... Ay yes, ma'am. May I request po, Miss Tennessee, Miss Tennessee Mengulio, the one handling po the local government to clarify this matter. Okay, um, thank you. Good morning po, Madam Chair. Um, we have... The I amount of 900, yes, ma'am. Um, PIDS study, it's 234 billion additional uh, in 2022. Um, so, nung, nung 2021, uh, 986. Uh, uh, ito. We'll divide among themselves next year, would hit 986 billion. Okay. Um, yes, ma'am. Madam Chair, the amount of 960 billion is the most updated amount po. Um, uh, in, uh, in 2021, weeks. what is the share of the local government? In for 2021? 20, for 2021, madam, the amount is uh, 695 billion po. Uh, okay, so you add this 234, so 960. Okay, okay. Yes, ma'am. You continue now. Thank you po, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, for item number two po, may I request po Director Emelita Menghamal, the one handling po this uh, devolution po. Director Melu. Yes, good morning everyone. Good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, for item two, uh, can I see the slide please? Okay. So the question is, how would the ruling affect the national government, particularly the Department of Agriculture and its related agencies, in terms of its continued service to local government need? So under Section 17 of Republic Act 7160 or the Local Government Code of 1991, the following agricultural services are devoted to the LGUs. Um, I beg your indulgence, Pope. Can we just get a bigger uh, 
can we make this a little bigger? I could not really read the the slide. James. Uh, okay. Okay. So, so, okay. That's fine now. Okay. So for agricultural extension and on-site research services and facilities, which include the provision and control of plant and animal pests and diseases, dairy farms, livestock, markets, animal breeding stations, and artificial insemination centers, and assistance in the organization of farmers and fishermen's cooperatives and other collective organizations, as well as the transfer of appropriate technology. Um, this will be uh, devolved further to uh, the functions to be devolved to further to municipalities would be agricultural extension on site research services and facilities related to agriculture and fishery activities related to dispersal of livestock, poultry, fingerlings, and seedlings, operation of demonstration farms, improvement of local distribution channels, inter-barangay irrigation systems, and enforcement of fishery laws, as well as the fish ports. So for the cities... This Can I question that fish port? Are you really talking of fish port or fish landing facilities? Alam mo, yung fish port major yan eh. Yung mga Nabotas fish port, General Santos fish port, Sambuanga City fish port, they are national fish port. Walo lang yan sa Pilipinas. Baka ang ibig mong sabihin dyan eh. Kasi yung mga nasa municipality, fish landing facilities, not fish port. So what are you talking about? Um, yes, Madam Chair, um, I would like to see this. But you clarified that because yes. fish port is a big responsibility and they are not in the municipalities. They are in major cities in the Philippines at walo lang yan. So are you talking of fish port or are you talking of fish landing facilities in the municipalities? <laughs> Okay, so we would get... You clarify that, Iha, kasi magulo yan. Kasi yes. malaki yung fish port. Hindi, hindi fish port ang tawag sa kanila. Fish landing facilities. Magulo yan. Kasi misi kami sa Committee on Agriculture, pag nagpapasa kami ng batas, akala ng no mga congressman, yung fish port is pareho do sa fish landing. <laughs> hindi, iba yung fish port sa fish landing facilities. Okay? Yes. Madam Chair, if I may... The fish ports actually was quoted directly from the local government code. Eh, ibang iba yon, kasi hindi din nililigay sa municipalities ang fish port. They call it fish landing facilities, hindi port. <laughs> oh, you have to clarify that, kasi ako walun tao na ako sa Department of Agriculture. Wala akong nadidinig na fish port. It's all fish landing facilities para sa municipalities. Ang fish port yung existing na malalaki na ang nag-a-approve nun, EDE, o hindi nga local government para i-finance yun. At multi-year appropriation yon kasi mga mahal yon So be sure that you are talking of the same thing kasi malilito na naman tayong lahat dyan. I guess, no, I I, oh, oh, baka baguhin yung nasa ano, i-clarify yun. May fish port but it's not in the municipalities. It's in the major cities of the Philippines. Oh, like Jensan, where the sardines are, ay, like Sambuanga City, where the sardines are, and Jensan, where the, ano, where the uh, tuna are, yung tuna, <laughs> and then Nabotas, where it's for NCR, and then meron ding other major fish port, like in Iloilo, in Pangasinan, in uh, at Quezon, I think, oh, basta walo lang yan, oh. They are, yung mga nasa municipality, tawag doon fish landing facilities. Okay. I-clarify natin yan kasi malaking responsibility yan. They're not one and the same. Okay? Yes, Madam Chair. That's noted, ma. So for cities, the, uh, the uh, devolved function is on the all services and facilities of the municipality and province. And for barangays, agricultural support services, which include planting materials distribution system and operation of farm produce collection and buying stations. Dito sa ano, dito sa nakita kong study ng PIDS ang ano ang uh, infrastructure ha huh? facilities which uh, farm to market road eh barangay ha. Huh? 
Barang. Importante yung FMR kasi kung i-devolve yun, kanino i-devolve yun? 10 billion ang budget nun sa uh, DA. Sabi nila, i-devolve daw yun. Farm to market road. At dito, nakalagay dito, sa so study ng PIDS, it will be devolved sa barangay. Uh, let's, uh, anuhin natin yan, ha? clarify natin yan, ha? Kasi malaki yun. Oo, and I don't think the barangays can easily take care of it. Baka minimum yun, ibigay sa municipalities and cities, but not barangay. Oo, farm to market road. And nakalagay dito sa study ng PIDS sa barangay, eh, oh. farm to market road, barangay. In the same manner na nilagay nyo sa municipality, fish ports. Uh, we have to clarify this kasi kahit yan nasa local government code, hindi ano yan, malaking responsibility yan. Okay? That's my comment there. Noted, Madam Chair. Okay. You go ahead. Next slide, please. So for question number three, uh, what are the planned prepare, prepared intervention measures of the DBM in the implementation of this ruling and in the provision of concrete assistance to the local government units in light of Executive Order 138 dated June 1, 2021? So under Section 9 of EO 138, the NGAs through the Department of the Interior and Local Government, specifically the Local Government Academy, shall provide assistance, technical assistance and capacity building interventions to all the LGUs in order to ensure that the latter will be able to effectively carry out and manage the devolved functions and provide for the needs and services of their constituents. This can take the form of lectures, trainings and exchange of knowledge to units and groups of the LGU personnel or consultancy type arrangements which can be covered by the memorandum of agreements between the NGA and NGA and LGU, where, for example, the LGU wishes, wishes to implement a project using their own funds under a technical assistance program with the NGA. Next slide, please. For Section 9 of EO 13A, a capacity development agenda for the LGUs shall be formulated based on the assessment framework and guidelines to be issued by the DILG LGA. The LGA shall likewise harmonize and oversee the provision of all capacity development interventions to the LGUs by the NGA's concern. Oversight agencies such as the DBM, NEDA, DOF, DAP, and the other third-party service providers to ensure the efficient, effective, and economical implement, impl implementation of these interventions. Further, likewise, per Section 9 of the said EO, the DBM DOF Bureau of Local Government Finance and DILG shall include in the capacity development of LGUs public financial management processes such as local planning, investment programming, resource mobilization, and budgeting to ensure that the allocation of the revenue allotment for basic services and facilities is in accordance with Section 17 of the LGC and other relevant laws. Particularly, the DOF BLG shall conduct capacity development programs regarding revenue generation and fiscal management to enable LGUs to fund the devolved services on their own. Section 8 of EO138 also provides for the establishment of a growth equity fund or the GEF, which shall be made available to the poor, lagging and disadvantaged LGUs that are financially incapable of allocating funds to implement the devolved services. The GEF aims to address marginalization, unequal development, and high poverty incidents across different LGUs. Uh, may I question that? Saan uh, manggagaling yung GEF? Um, th this will be... Will that come from the devolution or will it come from the national government? Um, not for a while. Mommy, I refer po to Rochelle for the, ano, Rochelle. Kasi bibigay yan to certain, ano, 
to certain LTUs. So, hindi naman pwede sigurong part yan nung increase ng ERA. Kasi yung ERA, how will you divide ba the ERA? How do you divide the ERA? Based on population? Based on area? Ano bang criteria ng pag-divide ng ERA? Uh, in, ma Madam Chair, on your first question, the GF will come from the national government. Uh, okay, that's good. Now, uh, yung pag-divide ng ERA, uh, paano na divide yung ERA? How do you divide it among the local government? It is What is the basis of the division of ERA? Like for example, that 234 billion na pinoproject nila, how will you divide it? Based on what? Uh, Madam Chair, are we referring to the new increase in the ERA, which is the oh, national? I think, I think, yung pagbigay ng ERA is uh, pare-pareho ang basis, di ba? Yes, Madam Chair. Oh, so ano ang basis ng ERA? How do you divide the ERA among local governments? Um, yung current practice po ng pag-divide ng ERA, may, may I refer you to the one yeah. who mentioned earlier about the budget of the mm -hmm. LG. Um, Ms. Tess, the computation, ma'am, of the era follows the same computation provided. Under yeah, what is that computation? I want to know that computation. I'm not with DBM. I just want to know for my information. Yes, ma'am, may I refer you to the to Director Christy Clasara for the Okay, okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So you're out. DBM, what? kindly kindly check your sound system, your ah, connection. Yes. Uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, Director Mehamal. No? I handle the budget of the Department of Agriculture. Uh, I think the best person to respond is the one handling L, uh, under the LGRCB, handling LGUs. Yes. Yes. But, basic, but basically, it's uh, based on the population and the, uh, I am Janayata from the LGRCB. Yes. May I uh, call on the representative from the LGRCB, the one who spoke earlier? Yes, ma'am. Um, for the computation, po, it is also based on Section 292 of the Local Government Code. Po. And what is that? Um, ma'am, if I may, po, uh, Section 292 of the LGC provides that uh, um, the shares of the LGU shall be distributed in the following manner. Um, where the natural resources are located in the province, 20% shall be um, allocated to the province, po, 45% to the component city or municipality, and 35% um, for the barangay. Then for the specific computation, ma'am, 20% to the provinces? Province, yes, ma'am, 45%, 45% ma'am. Ilan sa provinces? For the provinces po, 20%. Oh, okay. And then? For for the component city municipality po, 45%. Uh -huh. Then for the barangay po is uh, 35%. Um, then for the, uh, yung sa components ma'am, um, 70% po from the population of the LGUs. Uh, 30% shall be based on the land area of the LGUs po. Then where um, for um, highly urbanized or independent component, component cities po, 65% uh, for the land area, 70% yeah. land area, yeah. for the population and for the land area, ilang percent? For the land area, ma'am, 70%. Okay. Um, Ulitin mo nga, Iha, pagulo ka eh. Ah, sige. Sorry, ma'am. 70% ma. na, for what? Um, eto na lang po, ma'am. Mas mabilis, mas madali pong computation. Um, on the division po of uh, the era, um, 23%, ma'am, for... 23% for the provinces. Ito po yung sa kabubuan po. 23% mm. for the cities. 34% po for the municipalities, 
then 20% po for the barangays. Then the basis po for the LGU computation is 50% for the from the population po, 25% based on land area, and 25% equal sharing. Can you give me that in writing, ha? Huh? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we will submit. Can you po. submit that in writing sa akin? Kasi nagugulo. Yes, ma'am. So, right, so uh, from that computation, halimbawa, additional irin nila ay 235 billion. Oh, ano, yes. ano ang pinakamaliit na maibibigay mo sa isang municipality? Um, Ma'am, wait. Let me check lang po our computation. Um. Ma'am, may I ano po, get back to you po. We will just check our computation po for the era. I just, I just want to know the lowest era that you can give a municipality kasi may mga i-devolve na function. So I want to know if that amount will uh, be able to finance those devolved functions. So you will have an idea of yes, a, a, a typical municipality will be able to do the devolved function based on their era. Diba? Oh, so I yes, want to know. Okay, thank you. So yes, can you give me a written report on that so I will have an idea. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We you. will give you a written report. Oh, okay, thank you. Or thank you, you continue ma now. You continue. Please continue. Yes, madam chair. So the GF is intended to assist the poorest LGUs by providing them additional transfers that can be used to finance basic infrastructure gaps that will help improve their level of economic and human development. It shall be subject to mechanisms and guidelines for an equitable performance-based and time-bound allocation and distribution of the LGUs. Next slide, please. So for the fourth question, what are the possible problem areas in the implementation of this ruling? So possibility of perpetuating dependency among LGUs on intergovernmental transfers, the NTA shares from the national government, the absorptive capacity of the LGUs in utilizing the increase in their NTA shares for the implementation of the devolved functions and services, uh, differing capacities of LGUs to take on, implement the devolved functions and services, the alignment of the devolution transition plans between the NGAs and the LGUs and across different levels of LGUs and their timely submission, and lastly, the programs which are being prioritized by the LGUs may not be aligned with the PPAs to be devolved. That is one of the reasons why we are passing this bill to make sure that they will allot a certain portion to agriculture. Di ba? Yes, Kasi pag nasa discretion na ng LGU, baka hindi nila gamitin sa agriculture. Oo. So, that is one of the, ano, of the reason for this bill. What is the uh, right percentage to be required of an LGU so that the agricultural projects can be implemented by the LGUs. Diba? Yung mga devolved agricultural projects can be implemented by the LGU. Kasi one of your problems, you said, programs which are being prioritized by the LGUs may not be aligned with the PPAs to be devolved. Diba? Maraming i-devolve agriculture. E kung hindi gamitin sa agriculture, di may problema ang agriculture. Diba? Do you understand that? Oh, that's one of the problems you are seeing. Nang binigay na pera for devolution of certain functions of agriculture, tapos baka hindi nila gamitin, so may mangyayari, masama mangyayari sa agriculture. Diba? Okay. Yun ang reason. Okay, continue. Next slide, please. I think DBM, that was your last slide. Last that's slide, that's na po the last slide, Madam Chair. Okay. So that's the end of your presentation, DBM? Yes, Madam Chair. Thank okay. you. Okay. So we are now open to questions. Uh, maybe uh, uh, Senator 
Paul will have a question considering you are the chairman of the local government committee. <laughs> Senator Toll. Nawala. He's still online, Madam Chair, but I think he stepped out for a while. Uh, wala siyang question. Pakitanong mo nga. Yes, Madam Chair. I see we give priority to the senator to question eh, before we call on the others. So, uh, ask him so we can call on the others. Meron ka bang listahan ng gusto mag-question? Um, Madam Chair, I think we could. We should get the reaction from the leagues okay. on the so presentation of BBM and the LG. Oh. You call them um, one by one. We start from the representative of the provinces. So far, Madam Chair, we have the Vice President for Luzon, represented by, uh, represented by Ms. Johanna Dizon. Okay. Uh, we acknowledge Ms. Dizon. Hello po, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, apa. Um, regarding po doon siya, actually po, it, na, I agree with you 100% doon po sa sinabi nyo na yung ide-devolve na function sa LGUs ay baka hindi po matapatan ng uh, uh, era share po, additional era share. Kasi nung nag-budget forum po kami dito sa province ng Bataan, um, uh, doon po sa budget napakaliit ng inalat, inala, in, niaalat po na porsyento para po sa, sa OPA. And, Pero... Uh, Remember, hindi lang hindi lang governor ang bibigyan. Iha. Hindi lang governor ang bibigyan, bibigyan ng mayor. Yes po. Bibigyan ng city mayor. So ibig sabihin yung yung i-devolve hindi yes, lang governor ang gagawa noon. Maraming gagawa noon. So baka ang isinusuma mo yung ibibigay lang sa governor. No, it's not. Many there is an yeah. era for the mayor and there is an era for the barangay. So, pwede nilang planuhin na maghahati sila ng gagawin, di ba? Kaya, yes, hindi, I don't think it's not enough because that's 234 billion. Oh, And uh, sinabi nga dito ng PIDS, ang ididevolve, eh, almost the same amount that be, is being done by the national government na ibibigay sa local government. Oo. So, I don't think uh, it will not be enough. Oh. Uh, it's Madam, just that if you will give priority to those that are devolved or you will spend the money on other things, yun ang problema natin, di ba? Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, gusto ko lang pong iklaro yung sinasabi ko pong not enough is yung uh, percent share po ng Office of the provincial agriculturist doon po sa increase sa uh, sa na, na uh, share po sa province so we're, we're not um, talking of uh, just uh, provincial we are not talking of only provincial agriculturist we are talking of municipal agriculturist and the barangay kasi hahatiin sa inyo yung ire Hindi lang naman sa probinsya ibibigay yun. It's a matter of assigning what will be done by the provinces, what will be done by the cities and municipalities, and what will be done by the barangays. Kasi yung idinevolve is almost the same amount as yung ibibigay sa inyong budget. Diba? It's coincidental that yung idinevolve is almost the same amount as what budget will be given to you. Oo. So... It's a matter of whether you will spend the bad, the era to cover those devolved uh, no, functions. Oh, oh. So, oh. Okay. I guess uh, we, we, can we hear from the governors themselves? Uh, Daan dito si Ramil Rodriguez, uh, Ramil uh, Nang uh, ano, Governor Ramil of Laguna. Laguna. And, uh, sino sino yung and Vice Governor? Governor Mandanas, Madam Chair. Governor oh, Mandanas yeah. of. Oh. Uh, tawagan natin yung and... mga Governor, not the representative of the Governors. Yes, and uh, Governor Wilter Palma from Sambuanga, Sibugay, Madam Chair. Okay, call the Governors. 
Uh, can I start with uh, Honorable Governor Ram Ramil Hernandez? Yes, of uh, Laguna. Maraming salamat po, uh, Madam Chair, sa lahat po ng uh, asama po natin sa very important na hearing na, na ito. Uh, kahapon lang po, uh, nagpasa na po ako ng reaction paper ko po sa office po ni uh, Madam Chair. And uh, i-clear po doon yung uh, position po namin na uh, Medyo nakataasan po kami doon sa 10% uh, na allocation it's, para sa agriculture. It, it's, it's, remember, it's just an idea. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, that, ma that is just to make sure that you will spend a certain portion of your budget to agriculture. We can yes, bring it down if you want to. Kasi ang naisip ko, kung i-spend nyo rin naman pala sa agriculture, eh ilagay na natin sa batas. Kasi may minimum naman kayong i-spend sa agriculture, ilagay na natin sa batas to force the others na hindi mahilig sa agriculture to spend for agriculture. So I'm, I just want you to have an to give me an idea what is the percentage you're comfortable about. I'm not forcing you because I, I want you to ano. Pero gusto ko lang, parang kung iyon eh, talagang i-spend din na lang sa agriculture, might as well ilagay na natin sa batas para yung hindi mahihilig sa agriculture, at least mag-spend sila ng ganon for agriculture. Di ba? Kasi I notice uh, mga local government, mahilig sila sa infrastructure. But this one, may infrastructure din dito eh. Farm to market road eh. Oh. So, gusto ko lang malaman yung minimum percentage that you're comfortable with. Oh, oh, sa inyong budget. I guess that's why I'm calling the governor because you have an idea of what your budget is and how much do you really allocate for agriculture, lalo na ngayon na i-devolve sa inyo, ano tingin nyo na ilalagay nyo sa agriculture? Kayo nga, ano, yung nakikita ko, di ba local government may 5% sa women? Ano ba tawag nyo doon yung 5% nyo sa, ano, ano yung nasa batas yun eh? Gender, gender and development, Madam oh, Chair. Gender. Gender, ano yun? Gender, gender. and development. God, oh, God gender man. and development. Do you think uh, agriculture is not as important as gender and development in the Philippines? What do you think? What do you think? Ma'am, sino pa? Uh, ikaw, Mayor, Mayor ikaw, Hernandez. Ano, ikaw uh, Governor Hernandez, ano tingin mo? Uh, Ma'am, uh, uh, very clear and uh, very acceptable naman po yung uh, noble intention po ng no, uh, Senate Bill 1138. And uh, I, agree, uh, I agree with you. Uh, then uh, ang initial uh, reaction ko nga lang po, may tumatas yung 10%. Then kayo naman po nagsabi na hindi pa naman po yung final. The so, final yun. I just want to I know your opinion. We have to start from somewhere, di ba? <laughs> Oo. Oh, oh. oh. Kasi alam ko sa inyong budget, meron kayong gender and development budget na 5%. Eh. Tingin ko naman, pareho, well, I'm a woman. I'm supportive of the gender and development budget. But I think agriculture is very important also to deserve a budget, di ba? Yes, oh, ma'am. Oo. Oh. Po yung program po namin sa provincial government, uh, kasama po ang uh, agriculture po dyan. Okay. So, what percentage uh, are you comfortable about, uh, 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 Governor? Governor, what do you think is, uh, what percentage are you comfortable? Based po sa initial assessment po ng uh, local uh, finance committee, uh 20% of the uh 5% of the 20% development fund po uh kung yun po yung uh, may ata po natin uh hindi naman po kami masyadong mahirapan doon sa impact uh noon po kagawin po natin na uh, adjustment uh we can uh, adjust easily uh with that uh, percentage in figure po 5% of what uh local development fund po uh, magka ilang percentage ba yung local development fund ng inyong budget? Uh, 20% of the 20% of the total uh, annual budget po uh, inaalat po namin yun sa local development fund. Uh, so hindi ba ano ba ang percentage ng overhead ang PS nyo 55 o 50? Di ba may PS kayo and ano? PS and uh, 
and uh, overhead ng ng probinsya, ilang percent yon ang ang dictated sa inyo? 55 or what? Ah uh... Uh, I think uh, 55 po, ma'am. Uh, uh, correct me uh, if I'm wrong, uh, mayroon naman po tayo tiga DBM dyan. O oh, sige. Uh, Can we ask DBM what is the allocation of a provincial budget so we will know what is 5% of 20%? Yung gender and development budget is 5% of 20% ba yun? Hello, hello. DBM. DBM. Hello, ma'am. Can we ask DBM to answer? Um, yung gender and development um, budget, ano ba yung 5% of 20% o 5% of the total budget? For the GAD, ma'am, um, the 5% is uh, based on... Uh, oh, wait. Let me check, ma'am. Ano ba yung ano? Ano ba yung uh, budget division ng local government? Hindi ba parang 55% ba ang PS and overhead? Ganun ba? Oh wait lang po. Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, is anybody more knowledgeable about this? Parang nalilito ang ano DBM. Yes, uh, uh, Governor? Governor Palma here. Okay. Uh, 5% man, that is uh, total... Uh, naglulo ko yung ano mo eh sounds yeah, can, uh, uh, nag, nag blurred ang sound mo eh can we ask uh, attorney Lina to ano the sound kasi pag Mindanao naglulo ko yung sound eh ma'am that's from their end ma'am um, oh, oh. so I have to check their sound system their, their uh, governor Palma you have to check your sound system kasi blurred yes, yes ma'am uh, internet connection po naka oh, yes yes so uh, anyway uh, 5% of the total era ma'am yung gender um, yung... ah total era okay yeah. and then ah total era so yes. hindi total budget total era okay ah uh, total budget for that matter the same uh. hindi yung iba hindi era dependent eh Ma'am, ay. Yes, yes. Please clarify. Kasi alam ko, yes, dalawa yung component ng budget, yung ira at saka yung local taxes, di ba? Local income. Yes, ma'am. So may okay. mga local government na hindi sila ira dependent. Malaki yung local income nila. So I want to know where it is based. Uh, ma'am, for the GAD po, the 5% is based on the total annual income from regular sources po. Realize in the next preceding fiscal year which is the era po um as sir mentioned earlier ma'am oh era is the one coming from the national government may mga local government na malaki ang kanilang local income like yes, dito sa NCR hindi naman sila era dependent eh. oh so okay. what is the basis of 5% the local income or the era or the total budget uh, ma'am yes sir yes uh, it's a combination of the local e local sources and the era. So total budget. Yes, ma'am. Kasi, budget kasi ma ang kasi ang ano, ang total budget is composed of the era and the local yes. income, di ba? Yes. Yung mga progressive na local government, hindi sila era dependent kasi malaki ang local income nila, especially in the cities or, or in NCR. So I just want to know what is the basis of the GAD budget. So it's the total income. Yes, ang pagkaalam ko po, uh, total income. Ano, po. DBM. Oh, ano ang basis para sa nasabi nila, tanungin ko DBM eh. O ano basis? Total, total ma'am. Total annual total. income so from ira, regular sources. O, ira at ano. Ngayon, may sinasabi silang developmental budget. Ano ba ang breakdown ng kanilang budget? Alam ko, tama ba yun? 55% for personnel and overhead, di ba? Tama ba yun? Uh, yes, ma'am. DBM. DBM. Ma'am, uh, depende, depende po ma'am for our personal services po. Uh, 
Oh, uh, pero may, may, may ano yan eh. Merong, I mean, they can go beyond that, but there is a rule, di ba? Merong, yes, ma'am. Oh, ano yun? Uh, ma'am, uh, under the LGC po, the limitation is 45% in case of first to third class provinces, cities, and municipalities po. And uh, 55% naman po uh, for our fourth class to lower income classes. So, lower income maximum classes 55? Yes, ma'am. For fourth. Uh, no, no, it yes, doesn't ma'am. matter. Eh, magdi-disobey yung iba eh. So, maximum is 55, di ba? Uh, oh. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Ngayon, so ang natira, 45. Saan mo dinadala yung 45? Sabi nila, 20% ang development budget. Ha? Saan dinadala yes, yung ano, uh, 45 minus 20? Saan dinadala yung 25? Um, Ma'am, I think it is the LGUs po who can answer that since uh, they oh, are the ones pero, who allocate their respective uh, budgets. Oh yeah, but you have an idea of where they bring it. Where do they bring it? Ma'am, um... Pag ako DBM, way, ha? Pag ako DBM, yes. memorize ko lahat yan. <laughs> yes, no, I mean, uh-huh. meron namang ano yan eh, may, may, may practice yan eh. Standard naman yan. It may be different a little bit like that, get that. But yes, uh, pati ako, hindi ko naman alam yan. Pero alam ko, 55 yung ano, eh, maximum dyan sa personnel and, and uh, overhead. Eh. Tapos, yes, tama yung sinabi nila na 20% and development. Saan pumupunta yung 25? Ikaw, just an idea. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, the statutory uh, required percentages po ma'am, is uh, 20% for the development fund po, 5% mm. for the GAD, then 5% po for the local disaster risk reduction risk reduction and management fund po nila. Mm. So, Ayun hindi po ma'am yung statutory oh, uh, 55, 75, uh, yes, ma'am. 85 pa lang yan. Yes ma'am, then meron pa pong 10% for our SK in, for barangays po, 10% for SK po sa barangays. SK lang o kasama barangay. Alam ko may budget na sarili barangay eh. Yes, ma'am. The 10% po is coming from the budget of the barangay. The era po, era po of barangays. Hindi. Yung bang era, yung income ng barangay nang gagaling sa local o nang gagaling sa national? Uh, ma'am, for sa era po, ma'am, galing po sa national. We um, released oh, the report eh, eh, of the barangays. Ano itong 10% na to for SK and Y barangay? Eh, nanggagaling na na sa national ang income ng barangay. Um, ma'am, parang bali po, a uh, portion po siya of the amount uh, being received by the barangays po. They are required to allocate 10% po for the SK. SK and barangay. Okay, so... Um, the barangays po, ma'am. Barangays okay. will... Um, opo. Hindi, tinatanong ko tayo yung city or municipality. Kanino yung 10%? Kanino ibibigay? Uh, ma'am, yung 10% po, included po yun sa nare-receive ng barangay. Sa uh, case so po ba- ng... Sa barangay? Oh. Yes, ma'am. Hindi sa SK. Ang barangay ang nagbibigay sa SK. Ganun ba? Yes, ma'am. Opo. Okay. So, if you add that, 55 plus 20, uh, 75, plus 5 pagad, 5 for uh, uh, disaster, so 85, and then 10, 95, kulang pa ng 5. Ano saan pupunta yung 5? Sa general fund na po, ma'am, ng LGUs. Uh, so, o ngayon, parang marili naman uh, 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 Governor Ramil, <laughs> bibigyan mo ng 5% yung yung uh, GAD ng total budget tapos bibigay mo sa agriculture 5% of the development fund parang mali Ma'am, uh, excuse po uh, with, you, with all due respect po uh, hindi po kasi pare-pareho ang, uh, ang situation ng different provinces may mga provinces po na mga 70 to 80% talaga agriculturized po sila agricultural then may mga provinces mm-hmm kagaya ng Laguna na uh, ang uh, agriculture po namin ay less than 50% na po. So, mas mataas po ang uh, nagagasos po namin sa social services kasi uh, meron na po kaming six na cities, mas malaking portion po ng population na hindi dependent sa agriculture. 
So, siguro po, when it comes to the application of the percentage, dapat po, i-categorize po ng magkakaiba ang uh, different... Uh, but you can say that we don't be part of the development budget, we be part of the budget. Kasi napakaliit naman yung 5% of 20%. <laughs> di ba? It's so small. Eh, yung God budget mo, 5% of the total budget. Oh. Eh. Uh, so, I know, I just want to clarify para I would know what is reasonable, di ba? So, may we hear from uh, uh, yes, Governor uh, Palma? Governor Palma, what do you think? Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon po. Uh, mm -hmm. I just want to recap the, ano ma'am ha? I just want to recap. Yung personal services natin ma'am is 55%. Yes, yes, okay. I know that. The twenty percent, uh, the local development fund is twenty percent. Mm. Okay, the the calamity, what we call the disaster, is five percent. Five percent, yes. Uh, gender and development is five percent. Mm. Uh, protection of children and women is one percent. Uh, okay, that is from the general fund, na yon, di ba? General fund, no, no, ma'am. From manda uh, statutory yon, mandatory yon, ma'am. Statutory ba yon? Ngayon ko lang narin. Yes, one percent. Uh, one percent po. Women and no. children. Women, women and, and children. Eh, women na yung God eh. Uh, that's under Republic Act 9344. RA 9344, ma'am. Eh, saan ginagamit yung God? Di ba for women din yun? Uh, this is for the protection of children po. So it's not women, it's children. Children po. Oh, okay. Tanggalin natin yung women and children. It's for children. Yes, yeah. ma 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 Madam Chair. Okay. Yes. Madam, just to clarify, no, tama po yung sinasabi ni Governor Yap. There's 5% for God and mm -hmm. there's 1% for, barang actually, Barangay Protection for Children po yan. Eh. Oh, so uh, children for, yun. Kasi kinu-question ko, why women, eh, meron ng God budget for women. So sabi niya, children daw, nagkamali po, siya. It's for separate, children. Meron po talagang separate uh, allocation for pro pro protection for children. Madam children, Chair. yun nga, okay nga. Kinlarify niya nga yun, for children yun, hindi for women, di ba? Kasi nasa God na yung women eh, di ba? Okay. So, okay. Yung, yung general fund naging 4% na lang. Tama ba yun? Kasi sabi uh, nila provided by law yung children, so yung general fund is 4% na lang, di ba? No, no, Tama no, ba yun? No. Uh, we will we will sum up the, the total allocation, yung statutory, ma'am. We will sum up later on. Uh, mm -hmm. Tapos, 1% for the senior citizens and for the PWD. Okay? That's 1% oh. also. That is according sa law din yun. Yes, ma'am. RA9994. Uh, with, with, with the amendment, uh, RA7... Uh, kasi yung original law, yung sa senior citizen, tapos... Yung latest is 9994. 1 so 1% yun. For yes, senior po. citizen and PWD. Oh, yes, 3% na lang sa general fund. O oh, meron pa ba? Uh, discretionary fund po. Uh, under local government code, that's uh, under section 325, that's 2%. Meron 2%. pa po aid to the barangay po. So basically, it's 80%. Ah, uh, 90%. Basically, that's 90%. So, maiwan yung 10%. 2% to, to discretionary. Yes, ma'am. Eh, ano yung aid to barangay? Ah, uh, under section... Eh, kasama na yun eh. 10%, meron ng 10% for barangay eh. Hindi po, ma'am. Uh, that's that's under section 324, under 7160. Diba ba yun dun sa barangay? 10% for barangay? Kasi may nilagay silang dito ng 10% for barangay. Iba pa ba yung uh, A to barangay to 10% to barangay? Magkaiba ba yun? Yeah. Anyway, ma'am, under, under Republic Act 7160, nakalagay doon, should not be less than 1,000 per barangay naman. So nasa local... Pero malaki yung 10%. Malaki yung 10%. <laughs> so, I think, ma'am, wala ko lang 10% sa barangay, ma'am. And sinabi ng DBM eh. Ah, ano yun, Madam Chair, is Ma'am sa SK yun, ma Ayan po. Apo. Ah, sa SK yun. Yes po, tama po Ma'am si 
Eh, sabi mo, sa barangay yon na yung barangay ang magbibigay sa SK. Tinatanong kita eh. Eh, yun ang sinabi mo sa akin eh. Oh. So tayo, hindi nga tayo nagkakaintindihan kung saan pumupunta pera eh. Kaya nga tinitingnan ko kung saan pumupunta pera para hahanapin ko saan nyo ilalagay yung agriculture. <laughs> di ba? <laughs> yes ma'am, tama po yung sinabi niyo po. Oo. Oh. Eh sabi mo sa akin, 10% to barangay. Tapos sina- hindi mo sinabi sa aking SK yon Sabi mo, ang barangay ang magbibigay sa SK. Uh, the 10% ma'am. 10% ma'am for the SK is coming from the budget po ng barangays. But not necessarily po, 10% lang yung nare-receive ng barangays ma'am. Eh, nilagay mo dito kanina eh. Sabi ko sa'yo, saan dinadala yung income ng isang bayan? Ha? Apa. Uh, oh, so, nagkasundo tayo, 55% for personnel and overhead, di ba? Maximum. Yes, diba? ma'am. Oo. Ngayon, uh, for 20% for development fund, di ba? Yes, ma'am. Sigurado tayo doon. 5% Apa. for God, okay? Yes, ma'am. Oo. 5% for uh, disaster. Yes, pa. Kalamita fund. Oo. 10% sabi mo sa akin for barangay. Um, ano po yun ma'am, um, the 10% po is, um, kumbaga po hindi po siya kasama sa budget na nire-release po natin for the PCM. Separately po siya for the barangays. Minention ko lang po earlier ah, um, to enumerate the mo. statutory. Itatanggalin nyo, tinatanong ko yes, sa'yo, saan dinadala ang budget ng LGU? Ba't mo sinigit yung barangay kung hindi naman nagbibigay ang LGU sa barangay at ang barangay nang gagaling sa national government? Yes, o ano, tanong ko sa'yo, nanggagal, nagbibigay ba LGU sa barangay o hindi? Uh, no, ma'am. Meron pong separate na nareceive ang barangay. Tinatanong Just to enumerate lang po o, the o, statutory. So ngayon, wala na yon. O, So yes, ngayon, ma'am. sabi nila 2% daw, 1% sa children. Okay. 1% sa senior citizen at saka... PWD. Di ba? Tapos, 2% discretionary. Di ba? Tama ba yon? Yes, that's Yun correct. Yun sabi ni Governor. Yes, ma'am. Eh. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Oh, so, adin natin to. 75, 80, 85, 86, 87, 89. Oh, saan yung 11? Uh, yung 11 ho, ma'am, if I may, Madam Chair. Yes, yeah, sorry, yeah. Sorry po. Mm. If I may. Mm-hmm. Uh, yung, uh, may, mayroon pang 8 to the barangay. Lagay na lang natin 1%. So that's oh. roughly 90% po, ma'am. So yung, oh. yung remaining... 8 to barangay. Yung remaining oh, di, 10%, ano to, ma'am. 19%. O oh, yung 10% yes. saan? Yung, yung 10% po sa MOOE, maintenance and other operating expenses. Doon na yung kukunin yung uh, crudo... Yung mga bad eh, paper. Eh, 55% na yun eh. No ma'am, PS lang ho yun ma'am. Personal Ako services naman, na ma'am. hindi naman pwedeng PS eh, 55%. My God. Um, that's okay. under the law ma'am. PS lang talaga yun ma'am. PS lang yung 55%? Yes ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am, opo. My God. Masahol pala kayo sa mga department eh. Alam mo, sa private company, 15% lang yan eh. Ang personnel at overhead. Ha? Sa private company, that's 15%. Yeah. Yeah. Kaya nga pag sinasabi ko sa DA, ano ba yung pe, ano nyo, PS nyo at MOE? <laughs> Shocking. Oo. Totoo, sa private company, it's 15%. Oh. 15%. Oh. Kaya syak na syak ako talaga dyan sa gobyerno na ang laki-laki. Imagine personnel lang yung 55%. So 10% is MOEE? Yes ma'am. My God. Uh, excluding pa ang ano dun ma'am, yung mga debt services. Kung may utang yung local government unit, dun pakukunin sa 10% na naiwan. 
Kasi naman yung personnel, too big. That's yeah. too big. That's too big. Dapat yung 45 lang at most yun. Tapos yung 10%, dun yung kan- kunin ng debt service nyo. <laughs> Ay, my God. Maloloka ako sa inyo. Kaya pala wala kayong dadalin sa agriculture eh. Oh. Kaya hindi nag-develop ang agriculture sa Philippines. But, but uh, o oh, ikaw, tatanungin ko, ilan ang ibibigay mo sa agriculture? Uh, Pag sumulat ako ng batas, yeah. considering the devolution at yung additional era nyo, ilan ang ibibigay nyo sa agriculture? Uh, so, as of today, no, I'm speaking on behalf of the uh, of the, of the province of Sambuanga, Sibugay. May allocation ho kami 3% sa agriculture kasi we're lending uh, 20,000 per hectare per farmer at zero interest. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yung pinapag-utang ho namin. That's hmm. roughly 3% po. Ngayon, uh, if you ask me... Uh, eh, yung developmental mo, ibig sabihin, yung lending mo, 3%. Pero yung mga pinagagawa mong project for agriculture, di ba, misa may mga infra yan, may mga yes, ganon. Ma'am. Oh, iti 3% yun. Aabot ng, aabot ng mga 5% siguro kami. Of the total budget? Oh, of the total budget po. Oh, kasi sabi ni Governor Ramil, eh, 5% daw of 20%. Five <laughs> percent of twenty percent is ah uh, two percent, one percent of the budget. Yon. Yeah. That's too low. I, ako, I can agree to five percent of the budget, the total budget, but not one percent of the total budget. Okay. Oh, let's hear from the other governors uh, Thank who you, are here. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Go- Governor Mandanas. Oh, Governor Mandanas. Governor Mandanas. Manda okay, chair. Governor Mandanas. We hear from Governor Mandanas. Um, if Governor Mandanas is not yet uh, responsive to our call, Madam Chair, we can proceed to Mayor, the Mayor sure. of. Uh, Wait, Madam Chair. Mayor, Mayor Arnan, Arnan Panaligan. Oh, yes, okay. Kalapan City. Yes, I know you, Iho. Oh. Yes po, uh, matagal po naman pinalam. Magandang hapon po. Uh, oh, magandang hapon. Okay. Here, Madam Chair, just for information. And uh, magandang hapon din kay Senator Turitino. Uh, ating kaibigan po. So, ayun ang mga nag-sabinit, Madam Chairperson, by position paper sa committee, sa so, dito mm. po, masahin na makakutang. Pero ilang ang mga serious points na po. Uh, alam po naman natin na vital importance of the agriculture sector in uh, national economic development, considering that the third of our labor force is contributed by the agriculture sector. But we have seen in recent years we could decline on sector na ito. In 2018, Uh, the sector grew by more than 0.56%, way below the target of 4%. Hindi kasi And kayo maliwanag. Mayor, hindi maliwanag ang inyong ano, hindi ko makuha eh. Uh, Atty. Lina, hindi maliwanag ang kanilang ano, salita. Yes po, Kanila ba yun? Kanila ba yun? Ba't yung Opo. kay Opo, Governor ma'am. Palma lumiwanag? <laughs> Uh, After a while, lumiwanag eh. Yung kay Governor Palma, pwede mo bang paliwanagin para maintindihan ko kasi magulo? Uh, yes, Mayor. Please ka, pakifix mo na ng, ano, ng audio system nyo. Yung, yung audio mo, hindi maganda eh. Ayusin nyo yung audio nyo para maintindihan namin. Kasi importante sa akin yung opinion ng local government eh. Oo. Can you hear me, uh, Madam Senator? Oh, lakasan mo lang, Iho. Lakasan mo lang. Yes, Madam Senator. Good afternoon. Okay. Oh, yeah. Better, better. Okay. I'm going to submit then by a official paper in the Marine Peace Secretary yesterday. So, I don't know if you're going to get it. I don't just have my hands back on important points. Uh, I don't know if you're going to get it. I don't know if you're going to get it. I don't know if you're going to get it. Possibly that the work of the labor force is to be better than the control. But we have seen the decline of the sector rate over the past years, 
30% of our money is left in the rural sector. So we believe that, uh, I mean, not the IC and the financial crisis in the rural sector will have a lot in our poverty and nature networks. And we cannot deny that the government is not a government scheme, global agricultural development. And I believe that seventy number 28 is timely and relevant because it is considered as one of the interventions in the revitalization of the agriculture sector. I also believe that seventy eleven thirty eight will provide the uh, the uh, impetus for local governments to prioritize global agricultural development, especially in the life of the Bantanas ruling. So that I'm going to go to the Bantanas although the Bantanas of the region and the Bantanas government will, based on my observations, the Depo priority in the Bantanas energy use of the Bantanas Bantanas of the Bantanas sector. So hopefully, the Bantanas will, in a way, compare the energy use to prioritize the Bantanas Sa akin po sa Alpha City, uh, ay kung hindi ganun ba ng Alatira, we have prioritized for the future sector. Or to my point, we have not done sa DK. Ilang percentage ng budget nyo binibigay nyo sa agriculture? Uh, uh, sa the past three years, from 2020 to 2020, kung wala ko ng 9.41% ng Alatira, and the post of the program. Then for Ilan, 9 point, Ilan, Ilan? 41 percent ng ira nyo sa agriculture. Tama ba yan? Tama din ni Ka? 9.41 percent, ma'am. Ah, uh, okay. 9.41 percent for agriculture. Okay. Mindoro. Okay. Okay. In a way, we are already complying with the with this deal. I think the pasal of the NATO. I will be forget one hundred seven. Billion for the past three years, which is uh, 9.41% of the era for the past three years, about up to 1.9 billion. But Thank you very in, much. The uh, report of the project is independent, it's a priority for the leadership and the government. But I would like to have a very important part of the government. Sama ng reception. Ano wala na? Ang sama talaga ng ating online, di ba? I guess we must do something about this, di ba? Doon na lang ako maghihirin pag galing sa probinsya. Hindi maayos, di ba? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for your support. Okay. Uh, uh, sino pa ang... Yeah. Madam Chairman. Madam Chairman. Mo mag magulo eh. Magulo. Governor Mandana, sanja na. Okay. Then we call ano Vice Governor ano Kimpo of Aklan after Governor Mandanas. Oh, si Go salamat. Oh, Madam Governor Chairman. Mandanas, yes. Maraming maraming salamat, Madam Chairman. I I'm talking as a uh, Governor of a uh, Batangas local government unit, which uh -huh. is Batangas Province. Huh? And uh, I I just would like to. Uh, give full support to your uh, bill, uh, Senate Bill 1138, uh, which uh, coincidentally carries the same numbers as the executive order of the President 
in uh, <laughs> at the one of the president is uh, 138 yours is 1138 so, anyway it's just coincidence <laughs> nauna to good, sa uh, kay president kasi matagal na tong naka-file hindi ko pa lang nahihir <laughs> anyway what is your opinion just, governor uh, as i said uh, i am full support madam uh, senator madam chairman uh, regarding the your bill. Uh, however, I was thinking that this should be applicable to the uh, budget of the national government. Uh, because I agree, of course, no, with uh, the laws that they have right now, especially yeah. in the Constitution, that really when uh, certain activities would uh, really extend beyond the boundaries of one unit like it goes then it should apply really uh it becomes a national uh I have a, a national project so this bill madam chair is good for the national government's budget now we wala have, pong, uh, wala pong... Ano, walang walang department ng national government ang nakakarating sa 10% of the budget. <laughs> the biggest budget given is to education. Baka 5% lang of the budget yon And uh, maybe public works. Wala pong nakakarating na 10% of the budget. And we're talking uh, here... And we're talking here of yung devolution. So, magkano ba ilalagay ng isang local government pag na-devolve ang agriculture sa kanila? Yun lang ang in, ano natin. Wala po itong intention na pakialaman yung national government kasi ang national government, uh, with their many departments, nobody can exceed uh, 5% ng budget to any department. So, Ang pinakamalaking uh, nakita kong department sa national government ang budget is education kasi sweldo ng mga teachers. Uh, so, hindi po uh, nagbibiyag. Ano, ito, kaya lang po namin ginagawa to para hindi ba ma devolve na amount sa local government tapos may i-devolve din agricultural function sa local government. So, we just want to know how much percentage of your budget will you give to agriculture? Kasi ang una nilang i-devolve is health at saka agriculture at saka social services. Yun ang una nilang i-devolve. So I just want to know kung ano yung reasonable to expect from an LGU na ilalagay nila sa kanilang agricultural budget. Yun lang po ang question dito sa hearing na to. Okay. So, kung ililimit natin, Madam Chair, if you will allow... Hindi naman ililimit sa local government yung agriculture. Kasi sinabi ko nga sa kanila, katulad ng Coconut Industry Development Fund, it will not come from the budget. It will come from the Coco Levy Fund. Di ba? So, yung ibibigay sa coconut farmer is not coming from the budget. It's their money which they collected for the Coco Levy Fund. Katulad ng ibibigay sa rice farmer... It's a law na nung i, 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 ano nila, i tarify nila ang importation of rice, uh, yung proceeds ng tariff will be given to the local farmers para for them to be competitive. So, hindi magagalaw yon. But the other programs, yun ang magagalaw. Some of them will be devolved like local irrigation, seeds, at saka FMR. So I just want to know what is a, the reasonable expectation that a local government will give to agriculture to be able to perform those functions. Yun lang po ang question dito. So iba-iba ang opinion nila yung mga malapit sa Manila, konti lang gusto nilang ibigay sa agriculture, yung malayo sa Manila, they're willing to give it to agriculture, which is uh, normal kasi siyempre, Mas rural yung malayo sa Maynila, di ba? Okay. So how about you, Governor Mandanas? What do you think should a reasonable amount that a local government should give for agriculture? 
I, uh, in my opinion, and in accordance with law, Madam Chair, this should be left to the respective local governments. Because uh, uh, as you as mentioned, you in other words, it should not be legislated. Eh, pero din evolve eh. Under the local government code, may mga di devolve sa, sa local government na agricultural, ano eh, agricultural uh, activities. That is according to the local devolution in the local government code. Oo. Hindi lahat sasagutin ng national government. So, gusto ko lang po malaman kung i-devolve ilang percent ng budget nyo ang ibibigay nyo sa agriculture kasi po Hindi ko naman kinukuha lahat ang budget nyo. Gusto ko lang po, kung yung what is reasonable na talaga ibibigay nyo naman sa agriculture, iset na natin para yung mga local government na hindi mahilig sa agriculture, na dapat naman tulungan ng agriculture, eh meron silang ibigay sa agriculture na budget. In the first place, may God, yung 5% nga binibigay natin sa gender and development. Hindi ba importante din ang agriculture para bigyan natin ng ganun? In the Philippines, sa being an agricultural country, di ba? Uh, napakahalaga po, if you will allow okay, me to answer. So, uh, if you will allow me to answer, Madam. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, thank you for allowing me to answer. Yes. Uh, yes. Ang kuwang ko po dito, Madam Chair, is that yung pong agriculture din evolve. Mm. Uh, yun po, simula pa po yun noong uh, 1991, implemented in 1992. Ano po, uh, ngayon po, yung kailangan gawin yun. Yung listahan na ibinigay niyo po kanina, yung po ang mga uh, listahan ng ginagawa ngayon ng national government. Mm. Uh, dahil Yun po, hindi lahat ay pwedeng gawin dahil hindi po pwede tayong mag-mandate from the national government ng percentage dahil iba't iba po. Iba to, nilagyan ng disaster, nilagay ang God. Oh, but nalagyan yon by legislation, di ba? Nalagyan yung God budget, nalagay yung Opo. disaster budget, nalagay yung PWN, ano, nalagyan yung yung children. Yung bang agriculture is not so important para hindi lagyan ng budget? Napakahalaga po. At eh, but ayaw po natin na... lagyan ng minimum. I'm not saying okay. the maximum. I just want to uh, legislate a minimum budget for agriculture for the local government. ba? Kasi kung ginagawa nyo na rin lang for agriculture, ilagay na natin sa batas para yung hindi mahilig sa agriculture gawin din nila, di ba? Kasi hindi naman lahat ng local government eh, uh, developmental ang isip. Oo, kaya gusto ko sana lagyan ng minimum budget para naman yung ibang hindi developmental ang isip, they, they follow, di ba? Ako po, naniniwala ako kapares ninyo, kaya gusto ko po yung bill. Eh, dahil nga po, binibigyan natin ng kahalagahan ng agriculture. Ang sinasabi ko lang po, hindi po hindi ko po mas masasamahan ang mungkahi na meron tayong minimum kung ano man yan but nga yung god uh, nilagyan oh uh, but yung hindi ang tanong ko sa inyo governor mandanas tanong ko yung, sasagutin ko po oh but ang god merong minimum yung uh, yung disaster may minimum yung uh, children may minimum yung uh, yung uh, ano yung mga uh, senior citizen may minimum. Bakit yung agriculture hindi pwedeng lagyan ng minimum? Uh, sasagutin ko po kung papayagan ninyo ako. Ang, ang sagot po doon, inyo pong tingnan yung disaster. Lahat pong LGUs tinatamaan ng disaster. Yung pong God, lahat pong may God po, may women lahat, may oh. gender. Hindi ba lahat tayo without agriculture, wala tayong kakainin? Hindi ba importante yung pagkain sa atin? Ang pinag-uusapan po natin... Hindi. Natin. Food security to eh. Food, we're talking of food security for our country. Oh. Ang, ang pinag-uusapan po natin ay yung minimum ng bawat LGU. Yung pong mga halimbawa yung binigyan ninyo. Sila may minimum eh. 
Oh, lahat po may minimum dahil lahat po applicable sa LGU. Lahat po tinatamaan ng bagyo. Lahat tinatamaan ng COVID. Lahat tinatamaan ng uh, ng mga calamities. Kaya Ayun, po tinatamaan din tayo ng hunger. We are being hit by hunger. Hunger. Itutuloy oh. ko po. Ka katulad namin dito sa Las Piñas, di naman kami agriculture pero nag-urban gardening kami kasi pag hindi kami nag-urban gardening, ang mahal-mahal ng vegetable, eh hindi ma-afford. At saka yung mahirap, at least may kakainin sila pag nawalan sila ng trabaho kasi may urban garden sila, doon nila kukunin yung kakainin nila. So it's also important in our everyday life. Diba? Alimbawa, nawalan ka ng trabaho, ano kakainin mo? O di kung meron kang tanim sa bakuran mo, eh di kahit puro gulay, very healthy naman ang gulay, eh di ako nga, puro gulay, everyday salad ang kinakain ko kasi gusto ko mamayat eh. <laughs> so, we can do it, di ba? So, so ayaw po ako sa inyo na napakahalaga ng pagkain. Sa kahit sa urban areas, mahalaga to eh. Mahalaga to kahit urban areas. Kasi kami, talagang namimigay kami ng seeds and fertilizer para yung aming kitchen waste and garden waste, ginagawa namin organic fertilizer, tapos namimigay kami ng seeds kasama yung aming fertilizer para lahat ng bahay dito sa aming bayan ay mag-urban garden para yung mahihirap na nawalan ng trabaho, may kakainin sila kasi... Pag hindi mo sila bigyan ng kakainin, eh nakakaisip sila ng masamang gawin. Pag hindi, nagugutom sila. Yun yung problema nitong agriculture. Eh. Pag nagutom sila, kung ano-ano ang naiisip nila. Oh. ayong po ako sa lahat ninyong sinabi. Hmm. Ang gusto ko po lang ipahatid, doon po sa mga bilanggit ninyo, mga minimum, hmm. eh lahat po yun applicable sa lahat ng LGU. Lahat ng barangay. Lahat mo may bata, lahat may babae, lahat tinatamaan. Pero, eh, lahat, lahat din nagugutom at walang trabaho. <laughs> tama po yun. Tama po yun. Pero yung pong, kung, kung ano ang gagastusin ng lahat na minimum, yun po ang sabi ko. Dahil iba't iba po. Marami po tayong mga LGU. Hindi naman marami. Kaya nga humihingi LGU. tayo ng opinion na ano ba ang gagastos yan ng atypical LV, LGU for agriculture. Hindi ko naman sinasabi na napakalaki but may minimum sana para makatulong sa agricultural development. Diba? Opo. Yun po ang aking pinipilit na sabihin. Oh, yun ang akin. Nakahanap ako ng amount na minimum na dapat gastusin sa agriculture para makatulong tayo sa ating agricultural development. Kasi that is very important for hunger, solving hunger and food security of our country. Sangayong po ako sa inyo sa lahat ng yan na inyong sinabi. Kaya nga lang po, yung pong kung ano yung minimum, ang aking pong imumungkahi ay ipaubaya po yun sa mga LGU dahil iba't iba po ang kondisyon ng mga LGU. Ako minsan po, alimbawa kami, ngayon, pag sa agriculture, sa agri-industrial, kami po, siguro ngayon, mga 20% ang ginagawa. Pero sa isang taon, baka hindi po ganon. Ang Manila, yung mga barangay sa Manila, eh, wala po naman, hindi nila nang kailangan po ng, sa agriculture na bigyan hindi sila. Po. Hindi po. Ano ako po, po nagtrabaho ako no. sa ano. Uh, ibibida ko sa inyo ang experience ko sa Manila. Before, ako po, kasi si Manny, pinanganak yan sa Tondo. Kaya ako po, bago nag-pandemic, every week, naandun ako sa Baseco. Tinutulungan ko yung mga taga Baseco. Nagtayo kami ng mga urban garden doon. Nagtayo kami ng uh, mangrove para yung mga, may mga, uh, uh, ano tawag doon, spawning ground of fishes sa Manila Bay. oh tapos, yung pong ano doon, yung eskwelahan doon, yung ano tawag dito, yung, yung Don Bosco, yung kanila pong football field, Nanghingi siya sa akin ng seeds and fertilizer. Ginawa niyang vegetable garden, yung football field niya nitong pandemic. Tapos humingi rin siya sa amin ng uh, 
ng uh, composting facility para yung waste nila at uh, yung kitchen and garden waste nila para gawin nilang organic fertilizer para sa kanilang uh, garden, sa kanilang football field. Ako po dito sa Las Piñas, meron akong ano, eh, rice garden dito. Eh. Meron pa akong rice field kasi nagtuturo ako ng rice uh, in bread seed production at mechanization. Meron po ako dito ng tanima ng ano ng, uh, ng cacao under the coconut tree kasi nagtuturo po ako ng cacao school. Nag-aalaga po ako ng ng livestock dito kasi kasi nagtuturo din ako ng livestock school. Oo. Oh. Tapos may vegetable garden po ako dito. Hindi hindi po komo ano ka ah uh, Uh, NCR ka, wala kang ganyan. Ang dami-dami ko pong tinayo sa Paseco, sa Tondo, na ganyan. Kasi ang hihirap ng tao doon, eh. importante din sa kanila yun. Oo. Buti kong palagi silang may trabaho. Mika, wala silang trabaho. Di nakakatulong yung fish at saka yung vegetable garden sa kanila. Namigay po kami doon ng bifar, ng mga fishing equipment para tulungan yung mga taga-tondo. Kaya hindi ko totoo na sa Manila, hindi nila kailangan na ang, ano, ang agriculture. Oh, we call it urban agriculture. We call it urban agriculture. Ako po na Anton eh. Ako nagtanim eh. Oh, ako nagtanim eh. Naawa ako eh. Kasi ah, hirap na hirap sila dun. Oh, hirap na hirap ah, sila dun. Ang pilit ko pong sagutin, tama po na tayo yung sinabi. Yung ang uh, ano, yung sa Don Bosco, yung football field nila, ginawa nilang vegetable garden eh, ditong pandemic, kasi siguro naawa sila doon sa mga tondo para merong libreng uh, vegetable na makakain, di ba? Opo, pero ang pilit, tama pong lahat siya, ang pilit ko lang pong ipaabot ng mungkahe, eh kung ano po yung minimum, eh ipaubaya na lamang sa national sa local government concern. Uh, huwag po yung didiktahan ng national kung ano ang minimum ng bawat isang local government. Hindi naman po ang dahil national ang didiktahan nito. This will be a legislation. Oo. And this will be passed in Congress. And in Congress, everybody will vote on this. Oo, kasi lahat kayo may congressman doon. E kung hindi naman nila gustong ipasa, e di hindi ipapasa. Oh, kasi ito po, by cameral tayo eh. By cameral tayo, meron tayong Senate at merong Congress. Sa isa Congress po, lahat ng lahat ng probinsya meron dong representative, 300 of them. So kung hindi naman nila to bobotohan, hindi naman to po mapapasa. Oh, hindi to mapapasa. So this will be the will of the people. So ako nga uh, Nagbabaka sakali lang ako na baka willing sila maglagay ng minimum budget for agriculture para lahat ng local government will give importance to agriculture. Yun lang. Po, ang, ang gusto ko po lang ipaabot, eh pagka po ito ay naging batas, ito po ay dikta na po ito sa local Hindi po. Government. Hindi po. Ang mag, magpapasa nito ay eh, congressman eh. Di ba inilect nyo naman yung congressman nyo sa lokal? Kung hindi naman nila butuhan to, hindi to mapapasa. Uh, uh, no, hindi ko po sabihin, pag naipasa na po ang batas na ito, na merong minimum, kung ano man po yun, I don't find po, anything wrong with it. Uh, hindi, hindi, wala, kong, wala po akong, I don't find anything wrong either. You don't find anything wrong. Alam nyo, Governor Mandanas, kayo, wala kayong problema kasi developmental kayo. But you will be surprised na yung ating, hindi lahat ng government, local government are developmental. You will be surprised. So, I just want them to give a minimum importance to agriculture. Yun lang ang intent ko. Kasi hindi ako naniniwala na lahat ng local officials are are mahilig sa agriculture, di ba? Oh. So, yun lang ang gusto kong malaman. Ano ba yung pagmamahal nila sa agriculture sa mga bayan nila that they're willing to give a portion of their budget to agriculture? 
Uh, yun lang ang gusto ko malaman. Hindi, hindi, wala akong problema sa inyo, Governor Mandanas, kasi very, ano na, ma-progressive kayo na governor. But we have to understand na hindi lahat ng local government ay progressive. So, uh, yun po lang, yun po lang. Thank you. Lang. Thank you po, Governor Mandanas. Uh, Thank you. Yung minimum, yung pong minimum mm. eh, ipaubaya na po natin sa local government. Sila na po ang gumawa ng kanilang batas. Imbis na gumawa po ng batas, eh, Senate, Congress, at ang Presidente. Which are part of the national Ipo government. naman, Presidente, to, in fairness to the President, ano ko no, po to, idea ko to, kasi ako po, eight years na sa Committee on Agriculture. At ako po, kaya ako mahilig sa agriculture, ang bubuhay po sa akin ay agriculture. Ang tatay ko po may poultry farm nung bata ako at ang nanay ko may rice mill. <laughs> so, yan po ang bumuhay sa aming pamilya. Kahit po malitang kita nila noon, kasi yung nanay ko po, kuripot, eh, nakaipon siya ng pera, binibili niya agad ng lupa sa Las Piñas. Nung araw po, ang lupa sa Las Piñas, 1,000 pesos per hektar. Kaya... Hindi niya pa iniyaman yung agriculture. Ang ang kanyang uh, malaking kita nang galing do sa kanyang investment, yung appreciation ng kanyang investment. So, parang natutuwa lang po ako do sa nangyari sa kanya. Kaya ako po, may special heart ako for agriculture. I grew up in a poultry farm in Muntinlupa. Rizal. Rizal pa ko kami noon, eh. hindi kami Metro Manila. Eh. I grew up there. O, oh, kasi may poultry farm kami. Doon ako lumaki. Kaya may special heart po ako sa agriculture. Kasi yun ang hanap buhay ng magulang ko nung lumalaki ako. O, oh, yun lang. So, pinaabot ko po ang aking paghanga at paggalang <laughs> sa inyong napakalawag na karansal. Kaya ako po maraming, ngayon, maraming salamat. meron akong farm school dito sa Las Piñas. Nagtuturo po ako sa mga farmer para maging competitive sila kasi ang problema nila eh yung mga farmer natin hindi nila alam kung paano palalakihin ang kita sa agriculture yun po ang itinuturo namin o paano lalaki ang kita sa agriculture that you have to do intercropping you have to do processing okay you have to do like this para gumanda ang kita mo so yun ang tinuturo namin sa aming farm school para lumaki ang kita nila kasi if we are unable to help our farmers increase their income, then we cannot be a middle income nation in the future. Kasi marami ng ating mga tao ay farmer. If we cannot increase their income, then they cannot be middle class in the future. At mawawala din ang mga farmer kasi yung mga bata hindi magpa-farming kasi sasabihin nila hindi kumikita na malaki sa farming. We have to solve that o, para i-continue ng mga anak ng farmer yung farming nila. Yun lang po, for our food security. O, yan. So, maraming, can salamat. We hear, o, maraming salamat po. Can we hear from other local government officials na naandito? Uh, uh, Vice Governor Baclan, ma'am. Attorney Rinaldo oh. Kim po. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. We recognize at... Uh, Vice Governor Kim po of Aklan. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, magandang hapon po sa lahat. I also represent the uh, League of Vice Governors of the Philippines, but uh, I'm, uh, I cannot speak for all of them no, insofar yeah. as the proposed bill is concerned, Maybe, uh, but I can speak for the province of Aklan. The Aklan, as uh, you very well know, is an uh, agricultural province, And uh, agriculture, together with tourism, are two of our main economic drivers. Kaya very interested po kami sa uh, pinopropose niyong uh, batas to uh, whether to allocate a mandat uh, there will be a mandatory allocation from the uh, budget, whether taken from the total budget or whether taken from the uh, 20% uh, of ERA. Uh, development fund like the other mandatory allocations, the five percent disaster, the five, the five percent uh, um, uh, God, the one uh, percent for uh, children, 
and of course the senior citizens and PWDs. No? Uh, pero whatever would be the outcome po ng uh, inyong proposed bill, uh, base sa pagbabasa namin ng inyong panukalang batas, nag-iisip uh, na po at nagpaplano kami rito sa province, especially na, uh, na ngayon na uh, mag-uumpisa na po ang ating budget cycle, mm-hmm. na to adapt or come up with uh, an ordinance mm-hmm. based on uh, your proposed bill for mm-hmm. an uh, Aklan Provincial uh, Agriculture Development Program through an ordinance. And uh, we can request the executive to allocate uh, a certain amount para lalabas po magkakaroon ng mandatory allocation mm. well, to be taken from our local budget. Yeah. Uh, At saka yun, la, sa, lalaki ang ira nyo eh. Lalaki ang ira nyo this next year kasi i-implement yung Mandanas ruling eh. Oo. So uh, you will expect yan. a bigger uh, budget next year. Uh-oh. Yeah, totoo po yan. Pero inatay nga po namin kung uh, ganun din ang uh, rest of the local government units kung magkano talaga ang ma-allocate sa share sa national tax uh, allotment. Sabi, no, ng, uh, sabi ng ano ng DOF 190 billion, sabi ng PIDS yung projection nila 230 billion. Pero they're near each other eh. Oh, so we can say na minimum 200 billion, di ba? Yeah, around that figure po. Kat, uh, pero ang distribution po, iba-iba doon bawat uh, local government unit. So, uh, uh, nga tinanong ko sa kanila, kung paano nyo ba dinidistribute? Para malaman ko, tinatanong ko sa kanila, ano ba yung minimum na tatanggapin na isang bayan in addition? Para malaman natin magkano ba yun. Oo, para makita natin kung yung mga ididevolve na na mga bagay-bagay sa kanila makakaya nilang gawin with the additional budget. I think there yeah. will be enough. Oh. Well, uh, Siyempre, uh, mas efficient naman kayo mag-implement kaysa national, di ba? <laughs> Ako, tingin ko, ah, mas efficient ang local kasi hindi naman gagaling doon sa taas pababa mag yun eh. Yung budget nasa inyo na eh. Mas simple ang implementation, eh, di ba? Uh, tama po yan. And, uh, para to fund all also programs na locally suited. Yes. Kasi hindi lahat po ng mga uh, programs ng national applicable sa bawat LGUs. Yeah, yeah. Ano ang pangilangan ng uh, local uh, yes. government. So kung nandito na po sa amin yung pundo, we can uh, mm-hmm. prioritize or focus dun sa mga talagang kailangan na areas sa uh, uh, agriculture and fisheries natin. At uh, ginagawa na po namin yan. In fact, uh, in consultation it, uh, also with you, uh, Senator uh, Yeah, alam Cynthia ko may Villar. mga ano kayo eh, farm school eh, di ba? Nagtuturo kayo, di ba? Uh, uh, yes po. At uh, we try to allocate uh, a bigger portion from our budget to really improve uh, the uh, agriculture sector. Na hindi lang po kami umaasa o inaadap lang namin o kung anong dinadownload sa national through the Department of Agriculture. Tsaka ang... Have our own programs. At tsaka ang tourism can go with agriculture, di ba? Tama po yan. Yung tinatawag yan. nilang farm tourism. <laughs> Oo. Minsan gusto din ng tourism yung medyo rural yung kanilang lugar eh, di ba? Kasi naghahanap sila where they can rest. So maganda rin yung medyo may rural ambience yung tourism natin, di ba? Uh, tama po yan. And uh, since Aklan also, because of uh, Boracay, uh, talagang yeah. tourism yung main uh, yeah. uh, economic uh, endeavor namin. And uh, yung agriculture complement kasi kami, we yeah. provide food. Oh, pag pag gumaling ang agriculture nyo, yung lahat ng kakainin ng tourist sa inyo, sa inyo nagaling, di ba? <laughs> ah, tama po yan. Kasi sa ngayon po, only 5% ng local production ang uh, napupunta sa requirements okay. ng uh, aming okay. uh, tourism uh, oh, sector. Oh, oh, oh. So, we we'll try to improve our agriculture para naman tumastas yung share namin doon sa uh, pag-provide ng uh, food to our uh, tourists. Uh, from study, nakita ko yan eh. 
Mas marami pang pinoprovide ang Mindoro kaysa sa Aklan eh. Sa Mapuya. Sa Mapuya. <laughs> Mindoro, uh, Luzon, especially the mountain province. Uh, oh. Even our neighboring provinces po. Iloilo and Capiz oh. for our seafoods. Mindoro oh. for our rice oh. and vegetables and of course oh. uh, Baguio. And doon po oh. nagagaling. Even uh, oh. as far as north for oh. their uh, ibang uh, products, onions, garlic. No? Uh, wala pa nga pong 5% ang uh, locally produced na uh, Ako pagkain. kasi po, kaya ako in-encourage yung urban gardening. Di ba nung lumabas yung ano natin, yung ano tawag dito, yung ating uh, uh, cost of ano, ano ba yung figure na yun? Yung prices, prices, yung nitong bandang January ba? Ang mahal-mahal ng ng uh, vegetable dito sa Metro Manila pinagtanim ko nga sila lahat para bumaba ang presyo ng vegetable di ba? kasi nagka problema yung supply chain from the provinces eh. nagmahal ang vegetable sa Metro Manila eh, kung lahat kami may tanim eh, di, hindi magmamahal ang vegetable kasi marami hindi nabibili galing na lang sa, bak- sa kanilang garden kaya namin in-encourage ang vegetable garden dito, urban vegetable garden dito sa aming bayan sa Metro Manila. Kaya dapat uh, yung inyong uh, agricultural produce that would solve the uh, food needs of the your place. Diba? Hindi dapat manggaling sa iba. Dapat meron din kayong sarili. Diba? Uh, tama po yan. Uh, yan nga po ang pinuporsigin namin dito. Uh, we're trying to really assist our local farmers uh, and fi- uh, fisher folks na to increase the production. And uh, hindi lamang po inputs, uh, also sa processing and of course uh, marketing yes. ang assistance na binibigay namin. Kaya po, we can pattern our uh, proposed local ordinance dito po sa uh, panukala rin yung bill, especially uh-huh. on the Agriculture Development Program. Napakarami po pong magagandang programs. O, kung hindi naman maibibigay yung malaking percentage, kahit manila, maliit na percentage, but may minimum para lahat ng local government will do agricultural projects. Diba? Yun lang naman ang intention ko para mag-improve naman ang agriculture natin kasi nahuhuli tayo sa ibang bansa. Like for example, when we did the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund, the PIDS study... Ang uh, production cost of, uh, of palay in Vietnam is 6 pesos per kilo. And in uh, in Thailand, it's 8 pesos per kilo. Dito po sa Philippines, 12 pesos per kilo. So, ang layo-layo. Without the tariff, we will not survive the competition. So, yun ngayon, yung tariff na galing sa importation of rice, yun ang binibigay namin sa farmer para makakompete sila sa Vietnam and Thailand. And from the study, kaya sila hindi competitive because their labor cost is very, very high because they're not mechanized. Oh, ulang sila sa mechanization. Oh, and another is that their seeds are not producing enough per hectare. So, kaya ang budget nilagay namin sa seeds through field rice at sa mechanization through Filmec. Parang kailangan malaman natin why our farmers are not competitive so we can uh, produce or build projects that will make them competitive. Yun lang naman ang intention natin kasi uh, palagi nilang problema yung competitiveness. Eh. Kaya pinag-aawayan yung tariff kasi hindi competitive. Eh. Pero kung competitive tayo, miski walang tariff, we can fight them. but naman tayo dadaitingin ng Vietnam at saka ng Thailand? What is in Vietnam and Thailand that is not present in the Philippines? ba Parang ako kasi naiinsulto naman ako noong kayang-kaya naman natin yan. We just have to learn and to try. Oo. Okay. Thank you, uh, Vice Governor Kimpo, for your ano, support. And uh, meron pa bang mga local government na naandito para madinig lang natin ang opinion nila? Uh, Madam Chair, meron tayong mayor from Palayan City, si oh, Mayor Cuevas. 
Okay, we recognize Mayor Cuevas, Andrian May Cuevas, okay. Hindi ka matitig niya, nakamute ka. Puti pa mga mayor ng Palayan City, mga mistise, o. <laughs> Daig pa yung mga, daig pa kami dito sa Metro Manila. <laughs> okay, we recognize you, mayor. O, mahina lang yung ano mo, lakasan mo yung ano mo. Yan sounds mo. Yeah, can you hear me now po? Can oh, now? yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Good afternoon po and uh, we're so blessed na ma-accommodate yung I mean, comments uh, regarding this uh, issue. Um, Ma'am, um, in our era, we always allocate around 5 to 10 percent every year. Uh, but uh, it's the discretion, depende po dun sa... Um, uh, era namin plus yung local revenue kung sasapat ba kasi uh, I, I yes po yeah we hear you we hear you go ahead go ahead yeah um sana lang I, I go with uh, Governor Mandanas na we be given the discretion na um to allocate ia allocate naman din po namin um plus there are also other departments which uh, can help the LGU or the town. No, they're going like to the help. Cars. Except, yes. Ah, uh, that that dalaki ang ira nyo, and some function will be devolved, especially yes, in like, agriculture and health. Kaya gusto ko lang po may minimum, kahit maliit na ibibigay nyo sa agriculture. Yeah, I will not. Um, I, I'm not asking for the upper end. I'm asking for the minimum end. Oh, that's why I'm asking you. What do you usually allocate for agriculture? Because, ah, buti kung lahat nag-allocate. Yung iba kasi idi devolve kasi ng government. Kung hindi sila mag-allocate, ay kawawa naman ng agriculture, de ba? Yeah. Me, yeah, like what I've said earlier, usually, ma'am, we allocate 5 to 10 percent every year. But then again, depende lang po kung ano yung mga projects and programs, yung mga social development namin din. Um, but definitely, merong sa agriculture. Uh, we also ask uh, dun sa mga like uh, PRDP, uh, uh, DA, sa DA po ng assistance sa uh, uh, ibat ibang agencies to help our farmers sa uh, bifar sa uh, kaya po na na natutulungan yung yung aming agricultural side kahit po hindi kami masyadong um, yung land area namin maliit at saka medyo mountain uh -oh. um ang Alam mo, ang Mervaisia is the largest producer of rice in the Philippines hindi ba kayo ang Ay, biggest it, producer of rice in the Philippines so uh -oh. Uh, Ma'am, baka hindi na po. Hindi, kayo pa din. Alam mo, sumusubot lang sa inyo, Isabela, pero hindi pa rin kayo naaabutan ng Isabela. Oh, yeah. Kasi I think yeah. uh, you're very developed when it comes to rice production. Kasi ang rice yes, production is an element of technology din yan. Eh. Oh, I think you have the good seeds and you are mechanized. So, so yeah, yeah. maganda ang production nyo. Kasi yung mechanization, uh, bumibilis eh. Bumibilis. Pag uh, okay. tatanim, mabilis. Pag babagyo, dumadating na bagyo, pwede nyo nang anihin ng mabilis kasi machine ang aani eh. Hindi yung, that's, hindi, that's, hindi by hand. Kaya, pag halimbawa, nakita nyo dadating ang bagyo, anihin na kaysa masira ng bagyo, di ba? Ganun ang nangyayari. Kaya you really better off. Oh. Kasi you know that. And you are capable of that. Oh. Yeah, that's why we, yeah, that's why we depend so much on the benefit that would be given to us uh, via uh, rice tarification, ma'am. Kasi may so mga that will not LGUs. change. That will not yeah. change. Because rice tarification... So, is the rice competitiveness enhancement fund is provided by law hindi yung discretion ng DBM provided by law yun eh kasi nung tayo ay mag uh, mag-allow ng importation of rice may tariff 
And then yung tariff, para naman in fairness to the rice farmer, binil, ibinalik sa rice farmer para dun sa, yeah. sa inyong machinery at sa inyong seeds at saka pautang at saka yung training. Kasi kahit kami machinery, may seeds, pag hindi ka naman tinrain, paano gagamitin nyo, paano i-maintain, paano gagawin, hindi rin matututo, di ba? So, yun ang yeah. pinagdalhan ng RCEP. Hindi naman mawawala yun. Kaya lang some some uh, some projects of DA will be devolved. Kaya yun lang ang concern ko, yung madi-devolve. Yun hindi madi-devolve yun. Kasi ano yung provided by law yun eh. Sabi ko nga, yung coconut levy yeah. at saka yung rice tarification law, hindi maapektuhan nito yun kasi provided by law yun eh. O, at saka may sariling funding na pinanggagalingan yun. Ma'am, uh, 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 for your information also, ma'am, um, talagang yung uh, uh, LGU of Palayan has not forgotten the agricultural sector kasi um, I know I've, we've invited you many times over yeah. uh, the, we're conducting yung, ano, yung uh, aming Farmers Congress. There was one oh. time nga nag-gasolosit. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh. nag-gasolosit tayo, ma'am. And I apologize at uh, you ah, were no, too it's early. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. I really like going out. Except now yeah. that it's pandemic. Pero nung araw, talagang I really enjoyed my work sa DA because I go out really every day to see you. Yeah. In fact, yeah. kahit kami may session sa Senate, in the morning, I go out and then I come back for the session. <laughs> oh, kaya ang dami kong nakita na lugar sa Pilipinas because of that. And I'm very happy about that. Kasi when you make legislation, you have to see also what's happening there. Kasi you cannot make legislation without knowing what's happening, di ba? Oh, oh. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much. Don't worry about RCEP. It will always be there. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, any Madam, more local officials? Uh, there's none anymore, Madam Chair, oh, okay. except for the representative so, from the barangay. Oh, sige, yung barangay. Oh. Uh, Ms. Luvki uh, Fanlo. Then after her, Madam Chair, uh, we may recognize... Uh, Yusek uh, Ariel Kayanan from the Department okay. of Agriculture. Okay, okay. So we recognize the one from the Barangay representative. Oh, is she's always attending our hearing, di ba? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Good afternoon, po. Yes. Uh, my president was here earlier on, po. Kaya lang po was called on a session. So, uh -huh. um, well, pardon me for having to represent her at this moment. Uh -huh. um, uh, pwede ko lang ba pong ilapit if I am allowed to share the screen for a moment para mapakita. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Ito po yung ito po yung budget ng barangay. As far as the barangay is concerned, Madam Senator. So, uh yung 55% on personal services po. Um ito po ay uh, under most of the barangays in the Philippines po, uh, to date, kahit po 55% po ang nakikita ninyo sa budget namin, uh, eto na po yung situation na yung mga barangays namin are only under honoraria ranging from 1,000 up to 8,000 per month. Tapos yung mga tanods po natin normally get an average of 800 pesos per month na salaries. So even po with that situation, it already expands 55% of the barangay budget. Yung other remaining po goes to the 20% development fund, which is already statutory. Tapos nandiyan na po yung uh, gender and development that constitutes 5%. Meron na din po tayong 5% sa disasters. And then, of course, and dyan po yung 1% children and 1% senior citizens. Yung 10% po of the barangay budget is automatically allocated as funds for the sanggunian kabataan. Mm -hmm. So, 3% na lang po talaga ang naiiwan sa general fund nila for, you know, expenses nila like uh, uh, trainings or 
uh, school supplies, gasolines, and all of that stuff. So, uh, kami lang po, yung appeal namin is uh, any legislation po that will be done across the board, um, kami po yung pinakamalaking uh, tatamaan, gawa po ng wala naman pong ganong kalaking alokasyon talaga. Saan nyo dinadala yung development fund nyo? Ma'am, yung development fund kasi sa barangays, ma'am, especially if it is uh, provincial, let's say, ma'am... Um, Magkano uh, yan? Ma'am, normally ang range ng ERA on provinces po nasa 1 million to 3 million per year lang po. So, mm -hmm. Sa amin, ang barangay namin earns 50 million a year. Oo nga ma'am eh, baka pwedeng ma-adapt dyan <laughs> kaya, sa talas. Kaya yes. ako, kaya so, ako, <laughs> alam ko yan. <laughs> Opo, sa alam ko yan. Majority oh, po. Kaya po. nga tinatanong ko sa inyo eh. Ako naman, it's a percentage of the budget. So kung maliit ang budget nyo, maliit yan. Oh, kung malaki budget nyo, malaki yan. Oh. Yes po. Like for example, yung development budget nyo, kung ibibigay nyo ba one-fourth nyan eh, Ano masama? Agriculture naman yan. Oh. Uh, actually, ma'am, I was going to that na baka po pwede na i-echo ko. I would like to echo either yung uh, stand ni Governor Mandanas to allow uh, allow the local government units to determine their priorities. Ang problema or... kasi ng ganun, buti kung yung local government unit, eh, hilig yun. Okay. Diba? Hilig yun. Ang gusto ko lang naman, may minimum. Opo. Kasi kung halimbawa walang pagtingin sa agriculture yung local, di pa tayo na agriculture. Yes ma'am. Oh, yun lang naman ang concern ko. Hindi ko naman gusto na ibigay nyo lahat kung ano lang ang kaya nyo. But it should be na may minimum kasi may i-devolve sa inyo. Eh kung hindi nyo lalagyan ng budget, di kawawa naman yung agriculture sa lugar nyo. Kasi babawasin yan sa national budget, i-devolve sa local eh. Yes ma'am. Oh, so, iyon. So, it's not against sa ma maliit na budget kasi it's just a percentage. Oo. So, kung maliit ang budget mo, maliit din yun. Oo, diba? But I, uh, ang, if I may lang, ma'am, continue. Uh, sa, as far as the unique situation lang po ng barangay, baka po pwede if, if, uh, if it's an across the board, kung hindi ko magagawa yung uh, leave it to the uh, it, it strongly sana we would like to go with the position of Governor Mandanas but if not po pwede rin po sana yung uh, position of uh, Governor Ramil Fernandez na part lang po siya ng development fund kasi po yung barangay po 3% na lang ma'am yung remaining so if you're talking of an average na 2 million po yung 3% po talaga niya is very low. So yung mga rural barangays kasi ma'am, yung... yung yeah, alam ko yan, Iha. Anak ako ng mayor. Iha, anak ako ng mayor for 22 years. <laughs> Noong yes, time na ang Las Piñas, eh, uh, mah mahirap na, na bayan. Oo. So alam ko yan. Naiintindihan ko yan. Hindi ako naib dyan. I was not born as senator. I was a daughter of a mayor for 22 years. And we recognize and admire that, Honorable Chair. That's why I love agriculture, because I saw the implication of agriculture to a town. Oh. And until now, we are a city. I see also the implication of agriculture to a city. Nagbabago lang ang kind of agriculture in a city, but there is still agriculture in a city. Iba lang ang concept, di ba? Hindi malalaking lupa, but more of processing, more of uh, ibang klase. Oo. So, I know that. Hindi, 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 huwag kang matakot sa akin. Naintindihan ko yan. Oo. And then, I have a barangay in our city. Oo. Ang, uh, ang kapatid ko, ang mayor ng aming bayan. So, naintindihan ko yung barangay. 55 years in local government <laughs> from age, ilan ba yan? Age 12 hanggang ngayon. 70 years old na ako eh. So I have been uh, 58 years in local government. I know that. I know your life. Oh. So don't worry that I don't understand you. 
I know your strength and your weaknesses. <laughs> I know all of those. Um, I to ang, ang, ang concern ko lang, pag dinevolve ang agriculture, some aspect of agriculture, gusto ko naman, yung dinevolve na aspect, magbigay naman ng budget doon. Oo. Para naman hindi tayo matiro sa agriculture. Kasi nagdi-deteriorate ang agriculture natin. Which is very important to us because it's a source of food security for our country and our protection against hunger. So, naintindihan ko yan, Iha. You may proceed, Ms. Fanlo. Uh, Are we allowed? Yes. Okay, anyway, ma'am, to sum it up, with all uh, respect, yun po, sana po na kung meron mang minimum allotment or minimum amount, kung maari ko sana, yung percentage na lang po nung 20% development funds. <clears throat> kasi po, 3%, as far as the barangays lang naman po uh, is concerned, kasi po, we have, a, we have already the 10% uh, statutory that is allocated for the SKs. So, wala na rin po talagang percentage uh, other than the 3% remaining that can be allocated. So, uh, of course, in participation and admiration that we want to, you know, participate with the policy making, baka po pwede ma'am, yun po na uh, at the least na lang po, per porsyento na lang po siya ng 20% development. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Yusik Kayanan. Ma'am, last na po si Yusi ah, Kayani. Yeah, yeah. Sige. Ma ma good afternoon po, Madam Chair. Uh -huh. We were very delighted listening with the, what they call the... Can you make the pictures bigger para makita natin? Kasi ano ba itong nakalagay dito sa picture ko? Wala akong makita. <laughs> Attorney Lina. Yes, uh, you say, uh, please yung... No, no, yung, yung mga mukha nila, ilagay mo dito. Kasi ano ba itong nakalagay na to dito? Hindi ko naman kailan. Blanca, <laughs> ano eh. Blanca, iho. Uh, Miss Van Lok, uh, paki, uh, close mo na yung, yung sharing niyo. Opo, I'm trying to... If I can ask the host, I'm trying to unpo sa Webex kung paano tanggalin. No, no, you remove this. Nakablang ka eh. Tapos yung picture eh, naandun sa sulok eh. Ayun, nagko-control niyan eh. Hindi naman ako okay. eh. Ma'am, nasa kay, ano, kay Miss Fanlo, ma'am. Sa iyong pupos po niyan. I will exit it po. Oh. Is it my share? Oh, tanggalin mo na yan. Tapos na yan eh. Oh. Pakita mo yung mga mukha nila dito. Para makita ko pag nagsasalita. You know, mahirap talaga mag, uh, mag-hearing sa Zoom eh. <laughs> Kinokontrol nung ano eh, sa Senate eh. Oh, eh tapos na to eh. Tanggalin mo to. Tapos pakita mo yung mukha ni Ariel. Para madili ko yung sasabihin ni Ariel. <laughs> At layo-layo at ang liit-liit ng mukha. Madam <laughs> Chair, layo na. Tanggalin mo itong presentation ng barangay. Hindi na ito kailangan, tapos na to. Ma'am, hindi namin at matatanggal mo. Kay Fanlo talaga man. Kamis Fanlo talaga. Oh, sino ba yun? Si yung nagsalita from the barangay, ma'am. Eh, patanggal mo na, iho. Opo, opo. Tapos Nahirapan niya ito, atas. Eh. Tapos Nahirapan siya tanggalin, ma'am. Ilaki mo yung picture ni Ariel Kayanang kasi hindi ko makita Pag sasanita siya hindi ko makita Palaki mo yung kahit sa side Miss Farlow, perhaps exit para we could proceed Ilabi nyo na lang kaya. Ilabi nyo na lang kaya. Iha, tawagan mo nga si Reggie. Tawagan mo si Reggie. Nakausapin ko. Okay, this is better. Now I'm seeing you. Okay. We recognize Yusek Ariel Kayanan. 
maraming masalamat po Madam Chair and again I am very humble napakalit po nung picture ko kung para po sa init at saka po dun sa masyado po malalim na pagtangkilik at saka po sa pagsuporta ng ating committee chair ng agriculture ang sponsor po namin na tanggad mother po namin sa Department of Agriculture ang ating pong senatora Madam Chair, uh, we were listening with the deliberation a while ago, and I could not help but support all those what we call justification and emphasis that you have stated a while ago. Number one for Madam Chair, we have 17 comments here that we will be very happy to, uh, instead of the discussing, we'll be very happy to uh, submit for you. Yeah, yeah. You yes, give Madam me Chair. a copy oh, oh, so I can read. And Madam Chair, they're all supportive to what you have discussed and what you have de defended and justified a while ago. Ako, hindi ko naman gustong pahirapan ng local government. I just want a minimum budget from the local government para to make sure na yung ididevolve sa kanila, eh, bigyan nila ng budget. Kasi pag hindi nila binigyan ng budget yun, kawawa ang agriculture, di ba? Hindi naman lahat ididevolve, but okay. ididevolve. Uh, malagyan ng budget. Yun lang. Precisely, po, Madam, Kuya Arthur. precisely, Madam Chair, they are all aligned. As stated in our position paper, the, the Department of Agriculture fully support the intent of Senate Bill 1138, which is to strengthen agriculture and fishery development at the local level through the better extension service, localized planning and programming, and in coordination with the national government. Tama po yung sinabi po ninyo kanina, the rowing and the steering principle. To achieve this, Madam Chair, the bill will mandate, katulad po nang nabanggit nyo kanina, dapat po talaga may commitment, the local government unit to allocate a minimum. Hindi ito na po babanggitin kung magkano, ang sabi po ng ating chairperson, dapat po may commitment na may minimum on their annual development plan to the agriculture and fishery sector value chain to boost and promote agribasery as a major livelihood within the local communities. Again po, Madam Chair, we fully support. Kanina po nabanggit ninyo, it does not mean na kung siyudad po siya or rural, ay meron pong distinction na wala na pong agriculture. I, I need not to emphasize, maliwanag po yung sinabi ninyo. In fact po, sa mga, sa mga siyudad po, sa mga urban, that is from where more consumers of agricultural product are there. And Madam Chair, of course, if they could not produce, at least makatulong man lang po sila mag-produce at hindi ma-produce, yun na lang pong inu-augment po natin. But you are precisely right. There is an urban agriculture, there is a rural agriculture. So talaga pong parang may agriculture, Madam Chair. So with that, the enhanced production for service handling, processing and marketing systems are likewise expected as well as food safety and quality standard for the benefit of consumers both of domestic as well as yung pang-augment po natin yung ating export market, which is the last sort of effort po natin. Kanya nga po in-strengthen po natin sa mga local level. The proposed measure, Madam Chair, likewise, may make that some certain provision of the Local Government Code of 1991, which is mandating the LGU to capacitate their constituency through the conduct of more training on production, processing, trade, and promotion. Kanina po, diniinan nyo na po yung mga asignaturang yun. As the National Government Agency, Madam Chair, responsible for the promotion of agriculture and fishery development, doon po tayo magpo-focus ang national agency, we see the department playing a major role in efforts to capacitate also and help LGU so they are able to deliver the services as provided by the bill. Tama po kayo, Madam Chair, talaga po mayroong mga functions ngayon that we are very much willing po and in fact, talaga pong i-devolve na natin. Napanggit po kanina, Madam Chair, yung FMR, kaya lang po sa ang level po natin ibibigay and you are precisely right, we don't see it fit dun sa barangay because they are not yet capacitated. We are very, very supportive on that, Madam Chair. So, titignan At po... At saka po yung fish po. port, ang fish port kasi malalaki yun. Hindi yun okay. yung fish landing. Baka akala nila yung fish port at saka fish landing pareho yun. They're not the same. Oh. Yes, Madam Chair. Ang ibinibigay lang natin sa mga bayan, fish landing. Pero yung fish port, nasa major ano yun, getaway. Kasi ano yun eh, for export na yun eh. Di ba? Like yung sardines, yung tuna, yung nabotas, buong NCR yan eh. Oh. 
Yes, Madam Chair. Fully supported and while there are proof of concept, not only proof fact, of concept. But... Gusto ko sabihin sa'yo, na maghiring kami ng fish hatcheries, ang mga bill, puro fish port. Eh mga bayan, sa'yo ko, are you talking of fish port or are you talking of fish landing? Medyo fish nagkamali landing. sila, nilagay nila fish port. Eh sa'yo ko, baguhin niyo yung mga bill niyo, fish landing. Fish <laughs> Kasi landing. Kasi fish po. port, malalaki yun. Ano, go, national government ang gumagawa noon, hindi local. Fish landing ding lang yon for the municipal for the small fish or fox in the municipal water di ba yes po madam chair again fully agree tama po yon fish landing po hindi po yung fish port and what there are proof of concept under PRDB that out of 81 provinces 80 were able to implement accordingly and with quality po yung ating infra at saka po entrepreneurial and some still from the municipality have been having challenge. So that we need to capacity. Pero po yung barangay, tama po kayo mukha po may harapan po talaga matangin. So reiterating on our position, the bill is in accordance with our department's goal. Saka wala your... tayong, wala tayong pwedeng ibigay sa barangay na farm to market. Masyado maraming barangay, 40,000. Make, make, we can give one farm to market project every town. Pero one Amin, barangay, mayroon. And then the mayor will determine ano ba yung farm to market to sa bayan niya na pinaka-importante, di ba? Kasi 40,000 ang barangay. Pwede ba tayo magbigay ng 40 farm to market road to 40,000 barangay? No. Maybe in a year, a certain number lang sa bayan, hindi sa barangay, di ba? Baka swerte nga yung one farm to market road every municipality 1500 na yun eh oo eh sa halagang magkano ba yung 5 million sa 1500 eh di ano yun uh 15000 150000 tapos one and a half million 10000 na yun tapos uh, then ano so I think every barangay lang yun. Oh, 10 billion kasi budget doon. Eh. Madam Chair, again po, copy and valid po yun. And of course, our common goal of empowering all stakeholders by increasing agricultural productivity and profitability through sustainable, competitive and resilient technologies as well as practices. Making again, Madam Chair, 10%. In fact, it is something that we have to agree budgetary allocation. Tama po yung sabi nyo kanina from LGU's internal revenue allotment. Mandatory guarantees that the agriculture and fishery sector will get its fair share of support. It will assure stakeholders but the share of the sustained engagement. Hindi lang po pang panandalian kung di sustained engagement of LGU in the development of that agriculture and fishery sector. And, and there are a lot of LG in fairness, Madam Chair, and indifference that are already doing that. Meron na bang pong nakakagawa na nun. The DA has also proposed an N% percent LGU era allocation for agriculture in proposal of EO on the provincial agriculture and fishery extension services which we need to strengthen that we also submitted as a proposal. We will be submitting as a proposal. In the same breath, okay. and, uh, Madam Chair, we agree that the DA should also strengthen, which is also part of your vertical undertaking, its coordination with extension services to our LGUs. Medyo, meron pa po tayong maraming dapat uh, what they call strengthen. And this coordination will result to a more efficient and a more effective deliberation of extension service to the farmers or fisher folks. Madam Chair, addressing correctly this, their issues, Within our within the, uh, both perspective communities and giving them access to value chain, kanina po nabanggit yung manufacturing and so on and so forth, technology, financing, and programs that will ensure that their rights and welfare are not only defended, but also they are asserted, Madam Chair. We hence we wish to respectfully suggest to include in the role of DA, Section 6 of that bill na may profound po tayong submission, Madam Chair, to conduct capacity building activities through its existing programs as well as strategies. In that connection, I wish to tell you <laughs> na yung mga city agriculturists natin, municipal agriculturists, hindi naman sila trained for agriculture eh, kasi katulad ng city agriculturists namin, tinatanong ko, ano ba ginagawa mo sa agriculture? 
mag-ano daw siya ng ano, ano yung ginagawa sa mga aso? Anti-rabies. Yun ang perception niya ng trabaho niya, mag-anti-rabies. Oh, so ako lahat ang ako dito ang city agriculturist. Ako nagagawa ng agriculture program at siya nag-aantay rabi siya. So ganun ka kaliit ang perception nila sa kanilang responsibility as agriculturist. Kasi yung mga municipal agriculturist, city agriculturist, ewan ko o paano pinili 'yo, ang parang naging political position eh, 'di ba? hindi talaga kumuha ng agriculturist na gagawa ng mga project sa agriculture. So I guess it's the responsibility of DA to teach these agriculturists how to do their job. Kasi i-devolve sa kanila tapos eh, hindi naman sila oriented towards agriculture, ba? Diba? Yun ang problema eh. Dinevolve kasi sa local yung agriculturist tapos it was not explained to them What is their responsibility? So pag tinatanong mo, hindi naman makakatulong sa agriculture. Eh. Oh. Kaya dapat i-retrain nyo yung mga agriculturist na ang perception nila ng trabaho nila is to help in agricultural development. Eh, ba? Diba? Oh, that's very important. Siguro it's, it's time you... You hanapin nyo na yung mga agriculturists, municipal agriculturists at i-train nyo na kasi paano i-devolve nang hindi naintindihan ng trabaho, di ba? Madam Chair, your explanation actually is short than whatever I'll be discussing here. So the province-led agriculture and fisher extension system is a good avenue for collaboration between the department, national... Ako hindi ako masyadong worried sa provincial agriculturists kasi medyo... Paano yun eh? Oh, pero yung municipal, worried ako dun eh. Mga municipal agriculture is... Oh. You are precisely my, my right, Madam Chair, drilling down the LGUs along with the private sector and other stakeholders to bring extension services to the grassroots level, as you were saying, Madam Chair. With that, Madam Chair, we are with you and in the your advocacy in improving the growth and development of the country's agri-fisery sector We wish to assure that we in the day, Madam Chair, will fully support. Tama po yung sinabi nyo kanina. Uh, kung magkano or mag, uh, mag, uh, how much po yung percent. Oh, kasi sinasabi ba, nila, ba? sinasabi nila yung syudad daw walang agriculture. No, kami dito sa Las Piñas, may fish port kami. <laughs> so, ang dami namin fishermen dito. Yung Paranaque, may fish port din siya. Yung Bacoor, may fish port din siya. So, it, it doesn't follow na ikaw ay syudad in NCR. You don't have any agriculture. Yung baseko, ang dami-daming sa tondo, dami-daming fishermen doon. Pinagbibigyan Mama. ko pa yun ng mga fishing gear eh, nung naandun ako eh. So, everywhere, even if you are, ano, madaming ano eh, fishermen in the municipal waters, eh tayo, yung ating mga lugar, puro may dagat eh, di ba? Coastal. Siguro ang coastal natin is two-thirds of our, uh, ano, of our island. So lahat yun, may fishermen in the municipal water, di ba? So, Madam, uh, Madam Chair, you are right po. And in uh, fact, there are some provinces who have already We're already doing it and some are starting to do it. Ang, bihira ang province na landlock, ha? Bihira ang province na landlock. Oh, lahat sila may coast. Correct, ma'am. And, and may, pag may coast ka, may fishermen ka. Definitely. May, may fishermen ka. Oh. And, and some municipalities also that could serve as role model to those have not started yet. They could actually be our model, Madam Chair. But... Uh, So, totality, Madam Chair, tama po kayo ang sinasabi. Ang sinusuportan po natin ay magkaroon po talaga ng committed na ilang porsyento po na dapat okay. i-allocate po dun sa agriculture. But thank you very much, Madam Chair, for the opportunity. Okay. We will be submitting the details po na ano natin po siya. So, please, I ask everybody to submit your position paper to us so we can read them and uh, maybe study what is a reasonable amount to expect from the local government. Uh, thank you very much for coming. And I just want to reiterate my position that I am not a burden to you. I just want to know how much you will give to agriculture and maybe set it as a minimal amount. 
that yes. you will give to agriculture. I'm not asking for the maximum amount. I'm just asking for the minimum amount that you will set for agriculture. Okay, Madam. yes. Uh, uh, DILG USEC uh, Echeberry. Oh. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, um, um, moving forward on, on this discussion, um, uh, may, I, may I inform the, co the committee there are also some bills proposed in the House of Representatives of earmarking 10% um, for health, 2% uh, for anti-drug abuse council, and now we have another 10% for agriculture. May I recommend, Madam Chair, that we refer this matter to the local government committee to reconcile all these bills, if possible. Yeah, yeah. Kasi po, That's right. That's why I told uh, Senator Toll that I'm glad you're here because this is part of the local government also. Oh. Otherwise, Why Madam Chair, baka wala na mapunta sa... Maubos na yung earmarking. Hindi naman, sa local hindi government. naman. Mahirap na maipasa yan eh, sa Congress, pag-aaralan yan eh. Ako naman, hindi ako pupunta sa floor nang hindi ko kayang i-defend sa mga Senator yan eh. Oh. So that's why I'm doing this hearing. Oh. And then Congress will not pass it if it's not uh, uh, acceptable to them. So I'm just trying that it's important also that we have a minimum amount for agriculture. For after all, we are an agricultural country. Oh, we are not an industrial country. And the poorest people in the Philippines are the farmers. So if we don't allow a lot, any budget, the minimum jan. Eh, hindi tayo hindi tayo magsasaksid as a middle income country kasi hindi natin maitatas ang buhay ng ating mga farmer who are majority of Filipinos also di ba yun lang ang ano ko yun lang ang aking intent I don't want to be a burden to a local government anyway they will give a budget to agriculture whether they like it or not otherwise they will be unpopular to their constituents di ba so ibigay na nila sa akin yung minimum and then we will mandate it para naman yung hindi naman gusto magbigay mapilit ang magbigay kasi hindi naman maganda yung wala kang binigay sa agriculture pangit yun Diba? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. Okay, sige. Thank you very much. So, uh, we suspend the hearing. So, I want you to submit all your position paper and we will study this and maybe come up with uh, something that is uh, uh, acceptable to uh, to most to the majority. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Salamat po, mga local government, for coming. Okay, thank you.